to Raiders live here on this Friday before the Super Bowl. Amber Theo Harris along with my good friend Kirk Morrison joining yes, Raiders live as you my co-host throughout the day. <laughs> uh, weren't we just together? We just did Pro Bowl yes, together and now we are reunited. Yes. And it feels uh, so good. Uh, it feels good. It really does. <laughs> I'm here. Um, yep, finding all my cameras, everything yeah. working. Yo, uh, this I is the final day. Yeah, this too. is the final day of Radio Row. Right. This, this is, the final this is day. Friday. You see people packing up. Yes, it's a little more hectic than the. Um, I would say Monday, Tuesday, it's more like everybody's kind of catching their footing. Mm -hmm. Then Wednesday, it starts to pick up. Everybody usually comes to the Super Bowl win. Thursday, Thursday Friday. Friday, Saturday, it really picks up. But today is a, like the last major day of Radio Row. How many times have people? like kind of looked at you, but they were really trying to look at your name tag that you have. <laughs> how, how many times has that, that happened what this week? Because everybody, because we know everybody's like, we, we know the face, but you just like, I can't remember the name. Everybody's worked together yes. in television, in the NFL <laughs> or radio in the NFL. And you know everybody, but then you get right. a little bit thrown off. Oh, there's uh, Aiden Diggs. Uh, yeah. What a great little kid. Uh -huh. but, uh, Trayvon, <laughs> Trayvon Diggs' son, he's a little superstar. This is what happens here on Meteor Row. You just see all the stars coming around. But we've got a, a big show here on Raiders Live. Yes. We have uh, Akbar Bajabia Mia, who's a good friend of both yes. of ours, coming up. Uh, so many guests will be coming through here. We can't wait to talk to them. Cynthia Freeland. Yes. is coming up as well. But uh, Kirk, I haven't had a chance to to talk Raiders with you. I know, it's been a while. We've been covering the Super yes, Bowl yes. as a former Raider. Uh, tell me, what is just your general take of where the team is right at this moment? I think you have to be excited where the team is. Um, a lot has changed, right? Right. Are you talking about offensive coordinators and position coaches? Um, I had a chance to talk to Antonio yesterday. Uh, NFL honors on the red carpet and the one thing that you can say is that the guys are all in like I've never seen a team that is so excited about their head coach mm -hmm. they spent time with him last year on the interim role but this year it's like you can just kind of get a sense that everyone's like man AP AP from the beginning to end I'm excited for where this team can go I'm excited for what AP is bringing and I thought he said something really unique to me he said that Everyone's talking about Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. They're talking about Jim Harbaugh, and Justin Herbert and the Chargers, and then Sean Payton and the Broncos, and man, how are the Raiders going to deal with this division? And he said, how are those teams going to deal with us? That, that's and a that, change that's in mentality. A, that's a mentality thing, and yeah. I said, that really stuck with me because I really felt that no one ever talks about the Raiders, mm -hmm. and people got to deal with what they have. I said all along that I really, and I said it multiple times throughout this week, yeah. I do feel like the Raiders could be the Lions over the next two or three years. Uh, a former like coach that. that's gritty, yep. that says things that people are like, wait, Correct. what is he talking about? Isn't he a little <laughs> premature? Yeah. Right. And that aggressiveness and biting kneecaps and everything that Dan Campbell talked about. And they went from a 3-1 team to an NFC appear championship yes. appearance within three years. I think the Raiders with the mentality of Antonio Pierce could become the team that nobody wants to run into at least next year. Right. You know, that's then that's going to be right. something to build on. Um, but the defense, you played defense I did, for the yeah. Raiders, linebacker, <laughs> right? Right, right, right. This defense completely changed. I mean, a 1-8. I've never seen right. anything like it in the NFL. It, they were around 22-23 overall. Yes. And then they go and they give up 16 points a game in the nine games that Antonio Pierce was here. What do you right. credit that to? I just create, uh, I credit it to, first of all, the defensive coordinator, Patrick Graham, and being patient. I think that when you talk about the Raiders in terms of year number two in the system, guys just trusted each other. We saw that trust. Guys were just running around, and they were making plays. They weren't thinking as much, trying to make the right play. They were just trying to make the play, and I saw that. Max Crosby obviously is going to be Max, but I saw guys just play free this year. And that's the part that when I looked at it on film and year prior, year, the year prior, I thought guys were just trying to be in the right spot. Guys were just trying to make sure they didn't mess up. But this year, I saw guys cut it loose, and we saw some of those big plays. I thought of Meek Robertson. Remember, he had the big yeah. interceptions. Jack Jones comes in as if he's been here every single year, right, for like for a long time. He just got here halfway, not even halfway, like three quarters of the season's almost yeah, done. November. And he pops up. Malcolm Kuntz, right, was called upon early, and he responded. So it was just so many individual performances that I saw this year that I think you really got excited about because guys were in a system that they believed, that they understood, 
and they just let, let play with their hair on fire. You are entrenched uh, in that L.A. scene. Oh, I know yeah. <laughs> uh, you live there. Uh, yes. Jack Jones was a Correct. guy that came in and that came out of Long Beach. Uh, he yes. was at Long Beach Poly, and that's where Antonio Pierce knew right. him from. Do you feel like we're going to see many more players like that, that that Antonio Pierce mentality that he's right. going to identify? You're almost excited to see him put a roster yeah. together after seeing what Jack Jones did for this team. Yeah, I, I love the combination now of head coach Antonio Pierce teaming up with Tom Telesco as general manager. I think that for a lot of people who have seen Tom Telesco as a general manager, what he's did with the Chargers prior, they've drafted well. Mm -hmm. They've had some outstanding picks. Now, putting the whole team together and playing as one is one that, you know, Charger fans may get a say, oh, well, yeah. we never played together well. But I think he will bring that knowledge of talent Mm -hmm. And they're going to take some flyers on guys. They're going to take some guys who may fit what the Raiders are about. Confidence, swagger. And Antonio Pierce, that's all he wants from his players. Mm -hmm. Be confident. Be who you are. We'll coach you up. And we saw some players get coached up this year, and they started to play really, really well. Look at the players that Tom Telesco drafted in the first round yeah. in his 11 years with the uh, the Los Angeles. Well, yeah. it started the San Diego, San Diego Chargers, Chargers and then yeah. the Los Angeles Chargers. Correct. I mean, you know, Derwin James, Justin Herbert, um, you know, uh, he wasn't responsible for Keenan Allen, was he? I think that was right, yeah, before, right him, before him. Maybe it might have been right before him. But yeah. all, no, there they are right Keenan. there. Yeah. Denzel Perriman, Melvin Gordon. I mean, they, they hit. On yes. all of these draft picks, Mike Williams. I mean, we Joey saw Asante Bosa. Samuel. I yeah. mean, Joey Bosa is a dog. <laughs> Asante, Asante Samuel, you know, go up against uh, yeah. uh, Devontae Adams. Correct. You know, these are play Rashawn Slater. Could you imagine going to get a Rashawn Slater in the draft? <laughs> I mean, uh, that type of al alignment. Yeah, he's got an eye for talent. And now you're excited that he's wearing your colors now. Right? He's part of your organization. So you, you bring that along with, you know, Champ Kelly, who's his assistant. I think you've got a lot of minds that will come together and create one of the best rosters in the National Football League. Yes, there will be question marks because there's going to be competition at some positions as well. You have to create competition in the National Football League. I think outside of wide receiver, there's going to be competition at running back. There's going to be competition at tight end. I think there's going to be competition along the offensive line. Defensively, uh, you may get more guys along the offensive. You think there'll be competition at, at tight end with Michael Mayer? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's always somebody to push, a veteran you, to push, you the got, young guy. Absolutely. I yeah. mean, you, you're Austin still, Hooper was there. Yeah, you, you're still going to have, I think, the, the National Football League has really gone into two tight end sets now. We That's see it with the 49ers, personnel. yes. Yeah. Uh, you see it with the 49ers. You're going to see it, obviously, with the Chiefs. They do a lot of two tight end sets um, because you have one guy who's your primary blocker and one guy who's your primary pass catcher. But the more tight ends that you can have, it just creates more and more, I think, opportunities for guys to or for defenses to have to match up. I think that's what we've seen in the playoffs for sure. I think when we look back over the next 10 years and we look back at really the one draft that, did, that Dave Ziegler had a chance to do, Michael Correct. Mayer will stick out as the one one of the players. I, I hope more. Right. Trey Tucker could be one of them right. as well. Tyree Wilson could be one of them. But Michael Mayer, if you ask me to put my money right now <laughs> on one that would right. be a short shot player that's going to play for a long time in this league. Uh, do you feel excited about year two because of the way that we saw Michael Mayer start to really develop? Right. Uh, I can remember that one pass AOC in the end zone where he goes up and yeah. just takes the ball away. That's what he's going to be good at. That's where his bread and butter is Correct. in the red zone and just outmanning other, yeah. other defensive backs. You know, I think just just a natural progression of the tight end position in the NFL. Uh, your, your first year, it always seems like it's like Amber. It's always tough because you're, you're just trying to get happening? your legs. You're like, OK, uh, you're learning how to lift weights. You're learning how to study film. You're learning how to go through an NFL season. Then all of a sudden, year two, it kind of slows down for you. Mm -hmm. you. You know how teams are going to attack you as a tight end. You know how to block some of the better players in the National Football League. So you also have a situation that I always say this, too, is that when you're confident in who you are, your game is going to be better. Yep. And I think that's what Antonio... Pierce keeps breeding into the players and Michael Mayer going into year two I can only see sky's the limit for him because he is rare in that he's not just a pass catching tight end he's a blocking tight blocking end as well end. and he will be used a lot more now I think going forward especially in Luke Getze's offense the tight end position is something that uh, will be key 
We're going to get into that. I, I can't <laughs> wait to get your take on Luke Getz because I know right. that you have followed that offense closely. But we're going to take a break here on Raiders Live. When we come back, we're going to be joined by Mike Golan Jr. from uh, DraftKings. So we'll talk to him about the Raiders next. You're, listening, you're watching Raiders Live right here on YouTube. Raiders headquarters and we're participating in the Rush program which stands for Raiders UNLV Sport and Health. We're here at the Rush program prim primarily promoting black football amongst our youth, getting our kids um, involved. They're learning about nutrition, learning about making great choices for fitness as well as learning different skills to play flag football. <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. We've been able to do tons of drills. Talked a lot about preparing ourselves before a game or something like that. Um, you know, we know that middle school girls struggle with body image and things like that. So it's really important to think about nutrition. What do they need to eat to be able to do sports like flag football, to be physically active and to be healthy? We are so grateful for um, the Raiders for having this for our students to come out to just open in their facilities, a nice, beautiful facility. We, we, we are so grateful for them for giving the kids that opportunity. Hi, Raider Nation. My name is Brittany. I am from Ontario, California, and this is my rookie season with the Raiderettes. When I'm not cheering for the Raiderettes, I am finding new adventures, hanging out with my dog Leah, crafting anything and everything, and playing Sudoku. I love going on different adventures and finding new adventures. I've been scuba diving, I've been skydiving, so I've also been skiing, so I'm trying to find that next adventure and that next thrill. One thing that I am passionate about is inspiring the next generation. Being in this industry, being on this platform, you see younger, um, younger dancers that look up to you and so having that platform just to speak into their lives and just be a role model is extremely humbling. It's extremely important um, to inspire the next generation and raise them up to be amazing and even more amazing than you are. I have been dancing since I was a senior in high school. I did not grow up dancing, um, so I started late, but I think that was, everything happens for a reason, and that was my best option. That was my best journey that I took for myself. Um, I've actually been running track since I was seven years old. Both of my parents were professional athletes, so running track is in my blood. <laughs> so I ran since I was seven years old all the way up until college. After college, I realized that I wanted to just pursue dancing wholeheartedly, and I did that. And I've been dancing for six years now. Thanks for watching, Raider Nation. Just win, baby. Metro Police Department uh, in Las Vegas is showing our support to all the officers and everything they do around the community. Thank you uh, so much, Sheriff Mayhill, for the, for the warm welcome. Um, a sincere thank you and just an extraordinary gratitude for everything that the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department has done, not only to help the Raiders actually move with our transition to Las Vegas, but obviously making sure that our stadium and in the surrounding areas are going to be one of the most safest NFL stadiums. Everything was great. Obviously, we're very appreciative of the off officers and everybody here, and they're very appreciative of us and, and what we're able to bring to the great city of Las Vegas. And because of that dedication and commitment to public safety, I truly know that the Metropolitan Police Department, not only their, um, their reputation, is what has helped us host a Super Bowl in our first four years here in Southern Nevada, which is truly, truly incredible. So a big round of applause um, for you all. It's intercepted down the sideline. We told the state of Nevada. Touchdown. That you're getting more than a football team. The highest point total in Raiders franchise history. 
You're getting an army. You gotta stay involved, no matter what it is. We have a commitment to this community. And working in the community is the thing that we do the best. One night, one cause, one nation. Be there as we put the helmets down and our hands out in support of Nevada. Introducing the inaugural Las Vegas Raiders Foundation Silver and Black Gala. Featuring players, coaches, alumni, and entertainment. Join us in providing help and hope to those struggling with mental health issues. Secure your spot today. from the Super Bowl right here in Las Vegas, Nevada. A lot of guests coming through our set here on Raiders Live. And Mike Golick Jr., he's the son of Mike Golick. We all know him from ESPN Radio, where they have a show together uh, that is over on DraftKings. And we had a chance to talk to Jr. about what's happening with the Raiders, not just the Raiders, but how they can compete in the AFC West. Joining us now on Raiders Live is Mike Golick Jr., just an all-around great dude, uh, one of the great analysts and, and talk radio hosts. You've got a uh, podcast over at DraftKings with your dad, yeah. Mike Golick. Yeah, I get to hang out with dad every day, try and keep him in line, all that stuff. The only problem is he, coming off the pandemic, decided to glow up, do the whole gray beard zaddy thing. Yeah. So now i got a lot of friends posting, like, thirst tweets about my dad. It's weird. <laughs> and he lost a lot of weight. He's he looking did. great. He did. You know what? I love it. He's healthy. He's doing well. He just needs to dial it back a little bit on the public, like, being hot thing, yeah. <laughs> Whoever thought, Mike Golick. But, man, it is fun to listen to you and your dad uh, do some radio and some podcasts together. But let's talk about these Raiders. I mean, I know you've got strong opinions about all 32 teams. And when you look back at the Raiders season that was, it was it was pretty unique with the regime change. But looking at where they are now, having Antonio Pierce, having Tom Telesco, and then a lot of the – they have all pros that are still under contract. So what is your take on the Raiders, where they are now, and what they could look like in 24. Yeah, I think it's hard not to be encouraged about what you saw in the back half of the season. So much made, obviously, of Antonio Pierce and the job he had done resetting the culture midway through the season. He'd obviously been in the building. You're familiar, you know, but guys that are position coaches, you have that closer relationship with them usually as a player because you're spending so much more time with your coaches in those rooms than you are with the head guy. And so he already had some of those relationships, but to see him be able to automatically get so comfortable in his skin at the helm leadership. I remember his his first time addressing the media, he looked like someone that had done this so much longer than the job title had actually been his. And so to see the support he had from the players on the team, we talked to Max Crosby earlier this week, who obviously was very outwardly spoken yes. about his desire to Did have that AP. surprise you? To see a player, a fran like he's the face of the franchise. Yeah. To see the face of the franchise say, I want out if you don't pick this guy. I tell you what, after talking with Max for 10 minutes, doesn't surprise me at all because that's a guy who very much is – not afraid to say what he feels because he stands so confidently in who he is. Mm -hmm. He's so confident and understands the work he puts into things and how he wants that to be reflected in the rest of the organization. And I thought his re his reasoning behind it made a lot of sense. It's, hey, I've been in the league for five years now, and I've only been in the playoffs once. I want to get back to that feeling. I want it more consistently. And I know if we're bringing in a completely new voice of the coach, it's probably resetting a lot of that stuff. It's yeah. probably returning back the clock on a lot of that timeline, and that's not something he wants to do is let back and give, any, give away any of the progress he feels like they made over the back half of the season. What was your take on him not even getting one vote for Defensive Player of the Year? That's baffling to me. Yeah, a little bit surprising, especially considering the back half of the season he had, just how deadly consistent he is as a player. And I think the thing that always sticks out for me, and it, it's the thing that gets talked about a lot with Max, is just the snap counts. Yes. D linemen do not play 98, 99% of the snaps the way that Max does consistently. It's such a different level of conditioning. It's a testament to his work ethic. And so uh, I'm surprised, but with his mindset, he wants to be the very best. He doesn't want to just be talked about. He doesn't want a couple votes for that. He wants to win the thing, and I think the way he attacks that process, that's going to happen sooner than later for him. Look, the AFC West is dominated by the Chiefs. They're here at the Super Bowl. It's a difficult division. That's who the Raiders will have to knock off if they want to get into the playoffs, get deep into the playoffs. In your opinion, what will it take for the Raiders to be in that position? Because they do have a lot of key pieces set, but I think 
the quarterback is the biggest question yeah, mark. Yeah, I think that's going to be the biggest one. You know, Aiden O'Connell came in and you know, Jimmy Garoppolo, the situation there surrounding injury and, and how much that clouded the beginning of his yeah. tenure before he'd even stepped foot in the Raiders facility was a, a tough blow to the year. Aiden came in and performed pretty well. I think this Super Bowl has got a veteran college quarterback and Brock Purdy who made the most of his opportunity. I think Aiden did that too, but did not look early on like a guy you maybe want to go all in on at this point. So they're going to have to figure out what to do with that position because while they're figuring that out, the Los Angeles Chargers are getting ready to retool right now. Jim Harbaugh coming into the division as well. Justin Herbert still lives there. And so it's only going to get more difficult for everybody involved in there. And so finding an answer to that quarterback question this offseason and then making sure you still maintain all the rest of that culture stuff that's been the positive shift from AP is going to be huge. Look, the NFC West, uh, other teams other than the 49ers found out what it was like to coach against Jim Harbaugh in the NFL. And all of the college coaches have found out what it's like to coach against uh, Jim Harbaugh as he takes Michigan to a national championship. Uh, do you expect the Chargers to take a major leap forward? I mean, I know the Raiders don't want to see that, but they have to be ready for reality of, of Jim Harbaugh coming in. Yeah, I think in what you just talked about, all the stops along the way, he's an immediate floor raiser. He's someone that always comes in and sets the foundation along the lines of scrimmage in the place it needs to be to play successful football. And I think for so long, the Chargers, that's been an issue for them along the offensive lines. A lot of that tied to injury, but defensively under Brandon Staley, they always had trouble stopping stopping the run. All those things are now that Jim Harbaugh is coming and bringing great assistance, right? Jesse Minner, his defensive coordinator from Michigan, who was in John, uh, John Harbaugh's camp in the Baltimore Ravens for a long time, has so much of that NFL game to that Michigan defensive DNA. Him coming over. Greg Roman, these very veteran, trustworthy names that come in with that reputation automatically are going to get that thing going, I think, pretty quickly. People forget Greg Roman got hired there. I feel like that people aren't talking about that enough. What he did in Baltimore, and he had a unique situation. I quarterback Lamar Jackson I'm excited to see what Greg Roman does with a Justin Herbert I think that could be really interesting um, but looking around the rest of the division I feel like you can't sleep on Sean Payton either I mean you have these veteran coaches in the rest of the division and it felt like Sean couldn't get his feet under him the quarterback situation uh, we you know was what it was with Russell Wilson it got ugly yeah, at the end it, there it did it, it got it felt uncomfortable for people watching bit. from the outside do you expect the Broncos to to make any noise in that division I, I think it's going to be so dependent on what they end up doing at quarterback there and obviously they kind of went back on some of the initial reports where it sounds like they were trying to push Russell Wilson out they were so worried about that injury guarantee kicking in especially if he had gotten hurt down the stretch of the season that informed a lot of their decision making and I think Sean Payton's a great coach we saw this year he met that team where they were. It wasn't the high-flying Drew Brees offense we've been used to seeing in New Orleans. It was more play pass. It was getting Russell Wilson on the move. It was doing the things to give his quarterback a chance to succeed, but it seems clear Sean believes there is a ceiling with Russell Wilson, and no matter what the purse is attached to it, you brought him in here for a reason, and he believes he should be able to call the shot and go and get his guy. Yeah, so when you look around the division, uh, which of the three teams other than the Chiefs do you think could be in the best position to make a little bit of noise uh, going up against the Chiefs next year? Yeah, I, I, I mean, the, Ra the Raiders beat made them look bad on December 25th. They did. Raiders, bad matchup for them, right? Yeah. We, we've seen uh, for them the Chiefs, Orlando Brown Jr. going over to the Cincinnati Bengals after the last Super Bowl and how that's affected the edges on that team. So Max Crosby, a lot of those guys able to harass Patrick Mahomes. Also, while they were still trying to be the old Chiefs offense yeah. here. And I think that's been the difference in the postseason for Kansas. Kansas City is they've figured out their identity in that way and so I'm fascinated to watch what version of them this division gets next year because I think the Raiders are always going to be a tough out for them because like you said you've got incredible players while they're trying to figure out the quarterback position there but I think for everyone it's going to be hey can we trust the Chargers enough to actually go through and do this because right now I look at that division and go Kansas City is the only team I really can feel certain about and everything else is up in the air. I don't know if you saw Max Crosby uh, kind of go after the the uh, NBC guys the other day. Uh, in he had some receipts. He was like, I know you guys said our defense. He yeah. was on with uh, Chris Sims. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and Mike Florio, and he said, you know, you got, I got a bone pick with you guys. you guys. You guys didn't give us any respect and said that, you know, we have a bunch of nobodies, no blue chippers on, on this side of the ball, and they turn out to be the number one scoring defense over the nine weeks that Antonio Pierce takes over uh, there. And one of the reasons was we saw the emergence of guys like Malcolm Kuntz and, and Robert Spillane. Yeah. And when you look at that defense going forward, do you feel like there are names now that people say, okay, you don't 
we don't just have to account for Max Crosby. Malcolm Coots will come in and knock your head off. And what does that do for Max Crosby? Yeah, uh, I think it's twofold. One, I, I always say those guys, you're allowed to emerge and star in your role even more so when you've got one game record. Like, you need someone. Uh, uh, John Donowski is the head coach of Duke Lacrosse, and for years he's always called his offensive initiator the party starter. And I love that as an idea. Every unit needs a party starter. <laughs> I like someone that. where, hey, as soon that. as they yeah. walk in the building, yeah. you've got to know on. where he yeah. is every single down. And so when you've got all those resources going to Max, who's going to be so deadly consistent and going to be on the field doing it for you every time, it allows Robert Spillane and the rest of those guys to all of a sudden say, well, I can play more free because I'm getting single covered the attention's going that way and I can go all out here plus you also just have the standard set in the room when Max is going as hard as he is constantly when AP is backing that and that voice is unified through the locker room through the team it can go a long way in making that unit shine the way it did it's going to be a tough de defense especially keeping Patrick Graham on I think was a good move real quick got to get your Super Bowl pick I'm going NY. Kansas City. You are. I'm going Kansas City. I, Until I just think, they prove otherwise, right? <laughs> I, I, I picked against them the last two rounds. I felt like an idiot. And I just think the identity is the real thing I go back to is they are so sure of who they are with this year's roster now. Yeah. It's not even performing in certain areas as well as last year's roster did that made that huge overhaul post Tyreek Hill. But they found a way, and I they're think they do here. it again. Yeah, they're still here with all of those those warts. All right, we're going to play a quick game with you before we let you go. Uh, we're asking all of our guests, this, these are the logos for the last seven Super Bowls. This one is Las Vegas. Start up here. We're going to give you a minute. You grab that pin right there in front of oh, you. Oh, God. Go ahead and grab that pin right in front of you. Look. Oh, man. Kimmy Checks killed it. Wow. Oh, I haven't wow. seen. Kimmy Checks did it in 14.7 seconds. All the cities. List the cities starting with Las Vegas going back seven years. Take oh, wow. Okay. Here I'll we go. I'll tell you when to start. All right. Let's get the uh, time. Okay. Here we go. Let's three, two, one. All right. Is every city, state? Yeah, it, it's fine. City, All city, right. city, city. It's hard. It it's hard. hard, even though we've we've been to all of them. Oh no! Okay. okay, so how many seconds? Okay, you did it in a little under 50 seconds. Boy, I think Let's I see, you just. This. Uh, no, you did not. No, really? you did not. These first three are right. Obviously, okay. the fourth one, that was Tampa. Tampa. That was okay. Tampa. And then Miami, you got Minnesota, which is great. Uh, but that wasn't where it was. This was Minnesota. This was Atlanta. That was Atlanta? Okay. <laughs> there you go. Good job. Oh Mike right. Golick Jr., you can catch him at DraftKings. Uh, what else you got going on? Anything you got to plug? Yeah, no. Yeah, uh, DraftKings uh, every go, day? Go Joan uh Monday through Friday, 8 to 10 a.m. Eastern on the DraftKings Network, Samsung TV Plus, Roku, all those great places. And uh, try and catch us. Me and Dad hang out make everybody it's laugh. It's a great a show. It is a great show. And I uh, love both of you guys. You guys are so talented. And thanks for being here Absolutely. on Raiders Live. Thanks for having me. I'll tell you that Super Bowl game is a lot harder than it looks, even for those of us that have been at every Super Bowl over the past 10 years. We're going to take a break here on uh, Raiders Live, and when we come back, Kirk Morrison going to break down Luke Getze and what that offense could look like here in Las Vegas for the Raiders in 24. Hey Raider Nation, my name is Kelsey. I'm from Dallas, Texas, and this is my rookie season with the Raiderettes. Um, I wanted to be a Raiderette, and not only because of the leadership and how just involved they are within the team, but I had been in Dallas for a long time and I was a little too scared to travel outside my home state. Finally, I was just like, I got the courage to finally come out here and uh, see what Raider Nation was all about, and I'm just really pumped to be out here. The audition process for me was a little scary and a little intimidating 
intimidating, but I think that's what drives me is if you're not scared to do something, then it's not worth it. Um, I did come out of a five year dance retirement for my professional dance career. So it, I was a little scared coming in, but I'm just really proud of myself again to be able to say that I've made another NFL professional dance team. Um, I'm really looking forward to getting to know the traditions of the team um, and to really dive deep within the Raiders community. I know that the Raiders organization does a lot within the community with the youth, and I'm really excited to be a part of that because that's our next generation. That is our, that's who is going to be a part of the dance world, be a part of the football community, and if not, be the person that is in this chair next time. See you on the field, Raider Nation. Go Raiders. It is draft season, and with that, it's our pleasure now to welcome you to the Raiders NFL Draft Podcast. This is a very exciting time. We get a chance to join the nation, Raider Nation, talk a little bit about the draft. The Raiders very well positioned in terms of draft resources, draft capital. This will be a fascinating uh, watch as we get closer to the draft and kind of see how the Raiders put the pieces of the puzzle together. We've got a lot to cover here over the next eight weeks and so excited to be here on this Raiders NFL Draft Podcast. Welcome back to Raiders Live from Mandalay Bay, where Media Row is right here in Las Vegas. Kirk Morrison, Amber Theo Harrison. Kirk, you and I uh, yeah. talk a lot about what this offense could look like Correct. with the Raiders. Luke Getze was the breaking news a couple days ago that it's confirmed that he will be the offensive coordinator. He comes over from the Bears, where yes. he led that offense with Justin Fields. And it's very difficult to predict, isn't it, <laughs> what we could see here in Las Vegas because we don't know who the quarterback is, but Correct. what do you think Luke Getze does well? What do you, what are you expecting anything? Are you just waiting well, to see what the quarterback is? Yeah, well, I think you have to go back and look at Luke Getze and he's a guy who's a blend. Okay. He's a blend of Mike McCarthy, but he also spent time with Mike LaFleur. Uh, I'm sorry, Matt LaFleur when they were in Green Bay together. And then over the last couple of years, kind of he evolved his system a little bit to gear toward Justin Fields. I don't think that the Raiders have a quarterback on their roster who's like Justin Fields. So you can already already assume that the offense is going to look totally different mm -hmm. when the Raiders figure out what their quarterback situation looks like. I mean, Aiden O'Connell is the leader currently, but we don't know what free agency, we don't know what the draft may bring. And so right now it's really hard to see what the offense will look like under Luke Getze until the, the guys go out there on the field, until they go out in the OTAs and the mini camps and in training camp and see what does he want to do for his offense, where will the offense evolve? I mean, Justin Fields is one of the best uh, running quarterbacks that we've seen in this league. Obviously, the accuracy is something that you can, you know, not pinpoint, but it was a lot of screen passes, right? When you watch the Chicago Bears, it was screen to DJ Moore right, screen to DJ Moore left. I don't think that that's what we're going to see with this offense. He wants to get the ball down the field. Obviously, the relationship that he has with Devontae, Devontae Adams that they yeah. had in Green Bay together, you can't deny that. So I would love to see what his offense looks like. This is the second time around for him as an offensive coordinator in the NFL. Obviously, I think he's going to put some things together that I think a lot of Raider fans are going to like. You know what could be really interesting, though, is if they do trade up in the draft. Yes. Uh, and by the way, we have Cynthia Freeland coming on in just right. a little bit. She has her mock draft out for right. NFL Media. I can't wait to talk to her. I didn't even peek yet. I want to see who she put the Raiders, what they're going to do at number 13. Yes. But let's say they trade up and they get a, a Jaden Daniels or, or a Caleb Williams. Right. If you pair one of those, with a, then Aiden O'Connell would technically maybe be, the, I don't know who would be the starter or the backup, but two very different styles is my whole point. So when you have yeah. quarterback room mm -hmm. with very different kinds of quarterbacks one's more mobile uh the other one is is more of a traditional pocket passer Correct. what kind of challenges does that offer for an offensive coordinator well i think you have to not look at the challenges for the quarterback i believe that look at the head coach what does the head coach want mm -hmm. antonio pierce wants to run the football okay yeah. he's not into the whole seven on seven he's not to the uh you know the, the throw it around like it's flag football I think he wants to find an offense that's geared into running the football and in utilizing the play action. And that's why I think that the offense is going to be much different than we may have seen um, in Chicago, because you're going to run the football. You've got some quality backs. Look at what the Raiders were able to do this year. 
you know, with, the, with, the, with Zamir White, along with Josh Jacobs when he was, you know, healthy. They were able to run the football and be a more physical football team. That's how you go into Kansas City on Christmas Day and win. It's not throwing the ball deep down the field. It was imposing your will and running the football, which then what? Open the big plays down the field in the passing game. I think that's what Luke Getz is going to be able to lean on. But it really starts with the running game. That's where I think it starts first. Josh Jacobs is going to be a question mark whether they sign him or not. He is a free agent. Correct. So, you know, you're looking at, and I know what he was asking for last year. He was asking for two years. Correct. That was what they were asking for, two years, pretty much saying, look, uh, you could tag us two years in a row and the number is going <laughs> right. to be around 10 and then 12 million. So we want about 23, 24 guaranteed. And that didn't happen. Right. And so now they'll probably want a couple years as well. And it'll be around the same amount of money. But you also have Zamir White, Correct. who played very well at the very end. Do you think, based on what you just said about Antonio right. Pierce, you see them re-signing Josh Jacobs? Yeah, I hope so. I think he was sort of the guy that everybody believed that last year was the key to that offense. Mm -hmm. Um, because we didn't know what Jimmy Garoppolo was going to bring at the quarterback position. And then when Aiden O'Connell took over, teams are going to say, you know what, Devontae Adams is not going to beat us. You're going to have to run the football. And we saw a much different offense with the Raiders last year to begin the season versus the way they, when they truly started to take off under uh, Antonio Pierce as the head coach. So that's why I feel like we know what Josh Jacobs is. Mm -hmm. He's the heart and soul of that offense. And when you start to give him the football, I thought that good things happen. So having him back will be key. Um, obviously, it comes with a price tag. It does and come with so a price tag. <laughs> it's one and, that the Raiders have to figure out. don't command as much as, right. as other positions as we saw. But look at the free agent market for running backs yeah. this year as the new year will start in early March. Saquon Barkley's a free agent. Correct. Austin Eckler right there right. in L.A. Uh, Derrick Henry, Josh Jacobs, Tony Pollard. We Correct. keep forgetting he was franchised <laughs> by the Cowboys. DeAndre Swift. Correct. Uh, and DeAndre, we, it didn't sound like he wanted to come back to Philly when I've heard him on a couple of podcasts. So there is right. going to be a flooded market. Yes. And you wonder what that does to the price tag. Right. Um, but the Raiders know who they have in Josh Jacobs. If they're going to sign a running back, obviously it's going to be their own. So that's that's kind of irrelevant who else is out there. Um, but do you see them using Josh a little less? And I don't say that because <laughs> right. I say that because to keep him fresh when you know what you have in Zamir White now and, and you talk about the Kyle Shanahan coaching tree. Yes. Kyle Shanahan has always been a committee kind of a guy yeah. at the, in the backfield. Correct. Um, will Luke Getze kind of gravitate not towards the bell cow that Josh Jacobs was used right. as when he led the NFL in rushing or will he use more of a committee, not a committee, but a yeah. more of a split? Well, I think if you, it depends on what kind of money do they allocate to the running back position, right? Yeah. Like if they're going to allocate a ton of money to the running back position, I think you're going to have to, um, you know, utilize only two backs. If they are not going to re-sign Josh Jacobs, then you could see two to three running backs uh, as soon as possible because I think that's where you're going to continue to see what the Shadowhand kind of offense, the Matt LaFleur's offense has been about running backs and multiple running backs, and that would be huge for the Raiders. Oh, wait a minute. We have a, we have a set crash hey. here. Look who it is. Hi. Cynthia Freeland from hey. NFL Media. What oh, is happening? I'm so happy to see you. I'm so happy to see you. I want to give you a big you. hug. I miss we you can. so much. We I can. love that we're neighbors, they, and this is like the closest yeah. we've gotten in so long. We don't see each other. Oh, I miss you. Cynthia, and you know Kirk yeah. Morrison. Hug it out here, yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. How are you? Yes, I indeed. I love who stops by on Media <laughs> Road. You never know. You never know. Cynthia, we loved having you on the Silver and Black show this year, and I couldn't wait to have you as a guest here on Radio live because I wanted to ask how did you nail this prediction because we started at the beginning of the year and you said I have the Raiders at six and a half wins with the upper ceiling at eight yes you nailed it you nailed it and they got eight wins yep. and you said it's eight because of some factors that we can't for all of you <laughs> that if you're not familiar with Cynthia yes. I don't know where you've been but she's a mathematician <laughs> analytics yeah. expert um, and your predictions are always right but you accounted for the fact that there are factors that you don't know what's going to happen during the season, and a whole regime change yeah. is one of them. And and the adrenaline that is injected into a team when that happens. Do you think about things like that when you're making these projections? Well, I did not expect for there to be a whole regime change, but I got to thank my guy AP for making me look really smart because <laughs> he certainly did. Um, I think though that a lot of it is that you one. This is not an easy division. It's right. never going to be an easy division, and it's not an easy division in a very uneasy conference, right? right. So you're you're in a you're in a bad like the, the schedule gods were not friendly just because <laughs> you're in a competitive division. Yeah. So the reality is is 
without having secured an, the O-line from the inside out right. and secured exactly what you want to do at the quarterback position, obviously injuries notwithstanding, we, we, no one can predict those, but, you know, and not having all of the pieces, maybe at the beginning of the season, the defense was a little confusing. AP really got them going, but I think this team is in a really good up and to the right trajectory mm -hmm. that I wouldn't have said this time last year that that was the case. What's the big positive now going forward that <clears throat> before the season and then how it ended and you say, okay, you said this trajectory. Yeah. What does that trajectory now look like moving forward? Well, the division didn't get any easier. Uh, no, I know. <laughs> Let's just say yes. that. Yes. Going <laughs> right. number one. But I think now there's a clear vision as to right. what is the identity of probably the defense first yes. and then the offense second. But having a clear identity and then being able to build around it with a really proven track record guy in Tom Telesco. So it's kind of this marriage of like an injection of new thought. And I, I say new with like a little bit of a weird look on my face because Antonio Pierce has been around for, for a, a long, long time. time. But, right. be, you know, there are parts of being a coach that are like no fun, like like the, the like pure like nuts and bolts of like not so much fun, right? right, I'm, right. You know, that you'll have to get used to. But having a seasoned veteran GM right. with a new injection of absolute and everybody wants to play for I w I would like to I will run through a wall for him and yes. I should I have no business running through anything yeah. right I think so we would be a nice little linebacker I'd be a, though, the three I, of us actually. somebody told me the other He's day that I the middle linebacker yeah somebody no somebody told me I'd be a, like a really nasty versatile safety and I versatile safety <laughs> okay versatile safety. And now, are, you, are, like, you, are you like are you down near the line of scrimmage are you free sometimes, safety sometimes I'm everywhere baby oh, I'm okay. Buda Baker <laughs> Baker. Baker. Yeah. Oh. yeah, no, but they told me that. I was like, that is the, the best, best compliment, compliment I've yes. ever gotten. Yeah, I've now, okay. now I want to be told I'm a versatile <laughs> safety. I, I always like to ask you about numbers um, right. because I'm a dork. You're a dork. Um, <laughs> we're dorks. We're good. dorks. We're, we're, we we're number nerds. nerds. Okay. And, that's, and, and you don't know, <laughs> Kurt, you don't know, probably okay. don't know him too well. He's a dork too. So what does the data show you? in the past about teams that were on a winning upswing at the end of the season, how often that continues into a successful season the year after that? Like how much does the end of one season affect the season that comes after that? Well, the, I, I'm making this space because I'm kind of like, it would really help if that trajectory was coming from the quarterback position because it is the A number one most valuable position in Great any point. sport. Mm -hmm. So while I think that it's a really good sign for the future, it will be about the offseason moves. It will be about free agency. It will be about the draft. It will be about and, – and maybe even if we don't like it, as long as they like it, right? Like as long as they're getting the pieces that they want, okay. But I think what, you're, what you saw in the end of this past season was the ability for – I'm not going to pretend, okay, Max Crosby is absolutely elite. But there are other pieces on the defense that are more confusing. Correct. Maybe, maybe not, I mean, Max, we got it. Like, do right. not, but, yeah. but there, it wasn't the most, the defense wasn't, you didn't look at it and be like, this is the yeah. scariest defense. And they on were paper, winning. On paper, it was as, like this. No, yes, and, on, and they were working together because they had the right scheme fit and they understood the assignment. Ooh, so that's the, that's the difference here. Now, will everyone do that? You just need to start with a quarterback. Though. Like, yeah. it will all be in that. I, I hate to be so, but it, I think we agree. We, it's, we agree. It'll all be in that quarterback decision. Uh, I know. I'm sorry to jump in. Go ahead. Yeah. No, you go ahead. Uh, I know that you put out on NFL media your very first mock draft. Yep. Yeah. Uh, do you have the Raiders taking a quarterback at 13? Do you yeah. have them moving up? What do you, okay, tell. Well, okay, do so tell. Two yeah. Check it out on NFL.com, right? 13. Because yeah. I, I want to hear this because the, I looked at the teams who may be ahead. Yep. There's some who already got their quarterback. Yep. And then there's some mm -hmm. who could be in the market for a quarterback. Yep. So the Raiders standing pat at 13, I don't know they get the quarterback that Wait, they want. Wait, did they stand pat in your I'm draft? Not allowed to, I'm not allowed to trade. That was okay. going to say, there's some, there's some yes. rules yes. for my fake draft. My fake draft, <laughs> number one is yeah. no trades. Because okay. if, if I were allowed to do that, my editor would pull all of his hair out because I would probably tra trade every pick. <laughs> <laughs> like, he, would, he would kill me. So that's number right. one. And number two, we start it right now yes. ahead of anything with free agency even starting Oops. no info from the combine yet etc right. to watch then track the change over time so in my draft i don't have the bears picking caleb williams who right now is the absolute favorite to be the first pick and i understand why right but the but i as of right now if you were to look at what gets the bears the most wins 
it's a left tackle. So yes. let's, uh, the people get really mad at me, but we make some rules. The, right. I, yeah. We make some rules, right? Like, and that's what we abide by. But I actually have number six on, on this list. Uh -huh. To me, that's Mel Kuyper. Me and Mel yeah. disagree. Correct. I have Bo Nix at number three, and yeah. he's who I have the Raiders taking, the wow. most accurate quarterback in this draft, 77.4 completion percentage at Oregon. Yeah. Sure, I get it. He threw a lot of underneath stuff, right. understood. That's what this, that's what he was asked to do. And I watched him in some of these, you know, the all these East West Shrine, Senior Bowl stuff. Yes. They, they had him throw some deep, some deep stuff. That will be just like any other quarterback coming out. Can you give whoever it is the chance to learn the game at a regular trajectory? Don't ask them to throw deep outside the numbers in the first game. Like, what are you thinking? So I think the thing with Bo Nix is that nice accuracy would really blend well with perhaps a running back that should maybe still be there. And, you know, that guy in 17 who's pretty darn good. And, you know, so about those other people. He's I love right. Jacoby Myers, too. I'm a, I'm like a simp for him. Yeah. I love him. So I have a question because <laughs> so we're here at Super Bowl 58. Yep. And you look about Brock Purdy, Mr. Irrelevant, seventh-round pick. But I look at the draft that's upcoming, <clears throat> and I'm thinking about the Raiders drafting a grown-up. And when I say drafting a grown-up, that means a guy who's played quarterback for at least four years is my minimum okay. or more in college. Bo Nix has done that. Mm -hmm. Michael Penix has done that. Jaden Daniels has done that. I so love Jaden Daniels. Yes. I don't, I, 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 I don't, I don't think he'll, he'll be, be there for the Raiders. Yeah. And obviously there's the ties between <clears throat> he and Antonio Pierce when they were at Arizona yeah. State together. Devontae said I want him, Yes. by the way. So I'm trying to figure have, out. You'd have to go up and get him. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he'll be available there. I want a grown-up, though. I don't, I'm not ready for the project. I think we're looking at quarterbacks that need to come in. They're going to play right away, Cynthia. We saw how many quarterbacks this year play in the National five? Football. When I saw five? Tyson Bajant playing yeah. oh, this year, Tyson I said, you know what? Quarterbacks are going to play. So if the yep. Raiders draft one at that 13 yep. or whatever, they at least they get a grown-up who yep. we go in and it's like, all right, he can play right away. It's really hard, especially when the strength of this coaching staff, I'm, I'm not throwing any shade on Luke Getzi or whatever, but right. the strength of this coaching staff is defense. Yes. So let's get the defense right. But you actually saw that. Actually, D'Amico Ryans is a really good example of that, too. Correct. They had, they, they put their flag, they planted their flag, <laughs> and their flag was named C.J. Stroud. But then they surrounded him with defense. so many opportunities to succeed. Bobby Slowick, Gerard Johnson, uh, I think even uh, Mark Brunel was there for a while or is or what, yes. so, something consulting in some capacity, right? Give someone an opportunity to, to succeed. Yes. But D'Amico Ryans didn't try to do all of that himself. He figured, like, he figured it out right, but right. he got that defensive front. Like, Sheldon Rankins was there. He's a he's a vet. <laughs> that, like he's yeah. been on three teams. I think he was drafted by the Saints, then to the Jets. Whatever. Point being is get the get the thing you do the thing you do right, right, and then add the other things around it. Right. You make a living out of predicting. That's what you do. You use da data and analytics right. to predict things. Um, do you feel like the most difficult thing we think <clears throat> is to predict for the Raiders, not who they're going to pick in the draft or who will play quarterback, but what Luke Getze's offense might look like? <laughs> and is it because we don't have a quarterback yet? I mean, if you're trying to predict, is he going to, are they, we know AP wants to run the ball. He right. said that. Um, but if he's they, a linebacker, of course he wants to run the ball. Yes. <laughs> yeah. um, so I feel like it's very difficult as we sit here to, to predict Right. what this offense could possibly look like. Are you like the rest of us that you can't predict until you see what the quarterback is? Uh, I don't know if we need to wait till we see. I mean, you need to know who the quarterback is. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. I think you also need to see some of the moves, meaning are they going to invest in whatever resources are necessary to bolster the interior O-line? If you want to run the football in 2024. Right probably need the middle to look a little better than it currently does because outside zone running isn't working as well. We've seen even Kyle Shanahan now running the a gap, right? Mm -hmm. That's like old school football. <laughs> yeah. Give me some ISO baby. ISO, yeah. Right. So, but, it, but it's like, yeah. are you going to do the things that actually allow you to run or are you going to, I mean, if you would like to That's have a great point, Cynthia, like, right, look like, to see what they do with the offensive line. I, yeah. Do they sign Josh Jacobs back? <laughs> right. You know, there, there's a lot of questions that right. can tell you what their priority is as far Absolutely. as I running mean, the football. And building around Devonte Adams is a really smart strategy. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, make sure 17's happy. Yeah. That's a great place to start. <laughs> uh, who do we lean on in this Super Bowl matchup, though? Steve Spagnolo, the <laughs> defensive coordinator for the Kansas City Chiefs. Or Steve Wilkes. It's the Battle of the Steves. No one's talking about the Battle of the Steves. I'm bringing it all about I like defense. The Steve on Steve. It's well, Steve you know, Steve. you know what happened 15 years ago 
one years giant ago. win over a win, a fully yeah. undefeated Patriots yeah, team. I remember that. David Tyree catch. You know yeah. who that yeah. defensive coordinator yeah. was? Guy who didn't draft me. Steve Spagnuolo. <laughs> yeah, should have drafted me, Steve, but I wouldn't have been a Raider, so I, I take it back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. yeah, it all happens how it's <laughs> happens right. It all works out. But, but look, like, I think the way that Steve Spagnuolo has been able to adapt over time, and yes. even without Charles Amenehu, I just think that there are some tricks that he has up his sleeve like you were talking about me being a nasty safety well Trent McDuffie he yes, gets nasty. pressure on quarterbacks out of the sl like out as a slot, slot. Mm -hmm. by the way five years ago if you would have called someone a slot quarter they would have slapped you yeah. okay they wouldn't have slapped you but you know they would have been like oh that's like so that. offensive correct I'm so offended <laughs> that's, I'm a slot that's not quarter. the case anymore no now you need a nasty slot corner like it, <laughs> the slot just, corner is actually a starter now it yeah. you need it you need <laughs> well and it's all college they're playing three three five now exactly so what, what, in, what on earth is a three three five like we're gonna have to talk about it like, <laughs> we can talk about well, it I can tell you we can, I'll break, I'll it, break down it down for down. you it, it's because you know why Hybrid because safety. in college you get pat on the back as a defensive coordinator if you only allow 34 points hey 34 points, you are great. Good job. We scored Good job. Yeah. You're, you get pay raises for how many punts that you're able to Seriously, force an offense. Like, here's a million it's not dollars. about turnovers. Like, oh, they create turnovers. No, they had eight punts yeah. today. Job yeah. well done. But, it, but it's, you got to remember, that's who's coming out in the draft, and yes. that's what they know, and it, resumes are what they are. If you have a lot of experience with something, you're more comfortable doing it, and that's how we build for the future. So, yeah. you know, it, it's, to me, that versatility in that defense, it's weird to be like, why will the Chiefs win their defense? Like, no. they've got 15 and defense and yeah. 87. It's 15, fun. 87 and defense. That's it. We want to play a game with you, and I know my Let's producer's going to kill me for asking you one more question, but I have Fine. to. Are the days, and Warren Sapp sat here and said, the days of running the football on defense and thinking you're going to win that way are dead. You need your $100 million quarterback that right. can win that thing for you. Of what course is the Sapp data was going to say that. Of course Sapp was going to say that. <laughs> you know why? Because all he wanted to do... Yeah. Listen, of course he's going to say that. Yeah, yes. Know. So are the day, uh, uh, can you win with being a run first team? Can you win a Super Bowl being a run first team in the NFL? Okay. And with your defense and, and, and running the football and yes. not having a Patrick Mahomes type? A good 100%. quarterback. 100%. The problem is, is you have to be able to get a few chunk plays. Yes. So if you run on first and second down and you're in third and three, that is way better. Mm -hmm. Correct. Then you can get that 15-yard gain because the defense will know if you're going to run or pass on third yeah. down. You can't be like, I'm running, I'm running, and then like inexplicably on third and 10, run <laughs> the football, no. yeah. which does happen. It doesn't sound like it should happen, but it does. Yeah. So Unfortunate. you can't just be a run-only team. You have to figure out. You, you have, have to, to do it. Like, get the chunk it's play literally regardless. still Bill Walsh because Bill Walsh is actually a Shanahan, like a Shanahan's R. Walsh's, right? Uh -huh. What are you doing on first down? And Bill Walsh, if you read all this stuff, it's like, what is first down? Yep. If you're getting the, nuff, the numbers on first down, it leads you to better third down, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It all rolls Stay down. on schedule. There. All right, uh, we're going to play a little game with you, but first let's see the people that you uh, are competing against. Yes. Uh, every, uh -oh. I everybody need to move because I want to play through. this game. This. Kimmy Ooh, checks Kimmy. is in the lead. Yes. She got seven out of seven correct in just 14 seconds. So we're going to give you one minute long, to fill oh out God. this board. Why don't you, you know, we need you somebody know, to Should I switch? I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave. Give her that marker. I'm going to give you the marker, Cynthia. I'm going to well, leave the set for a second. Why are my coworkers so good at yeah, this? I, I want to play this Kirk, game. Maybe Kirk. I, the thing about it is I know how good I am at it because I am a nerd He's like really this. really excited to play this game. I'm really excited. Game, I don't want to see your answers. Right, I'm going to give you this board, I, Cynthia. Yep. And I'm not going to look at it. I, you might have to close your ears, too, though. Okay. You know what? Okay. What can, what can so, I do? Because I want to do this next. <laughs> do I just leave the set right quick? I'm leaving. Leave. I'm you leaving can, set. Look, I'm he's out. gonna leave. I'm out. You're I'll just be, gonna I'm, leave. I'm out. See ya. And I'll be. There you go. Come sit next to me, Cynthia. Perfect. All right, we're the, we have a two shot now. Okay. All right, Las Vegas is the first. So these are the logos. I'm gonna give you a minute. Las Vegas, you list the city. Oh, which that city it we're in? Was in. Yeah. All right. One of them. Okay, ready? ready? Here we go. In three, two, one. Uh, last year was. Oh, Phoenix. Whatever. This one was. L.A. This one was Tampa Bay. Uh, oh wait, 54. That was Miami. Am I backwards here? L I V. Uh, Tampa Bay. Um, uh, this one is Miami. Uh, this You're doing one is, good. You're doing good. Um, um, there's two more. There's two more. Uh, uh, Minnesota. And then what was before Minnesota? Um, 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 I went to it. That's, that's I was there with you. I have pictures with you there. It's not Houston. No, it's uh, this I'm is. I can't uh, tell you. I can't tell you. Okay, we're done. Wrong? Let's see. Could be wrong. Let's see. It's amazing because I've, I've been to these places. Oh my gosh, you're so close. You got six out. You got six right. You know what you did wrong? You flip 
flopped Atlanta and Minnesota. Oh. It was okay. Atlanta in 2019, Minnesota okay. in 2018. At least but I got the right job. cities. Hey, I was at these. I'm crazy. Seconds. We were all at these. And, and that, I, I, I want to see how Kirk does because, like, people that have been there and we all have pictures of each other there yeah. haven't gotten it right. So don't don't feel bad. Um, you did great. Hey, <laughs> Cynthia. You said it better I than Michael more. Jr. I feel, like, super smart after I hang out with oh. you. So thanks. I, always, I just feel super happy every time I hang out with I you. I know. You're so we're going to see each other uh, after this. At home. Sure. Now That's that we actually <laughs> have time. <laughs> we're going to hang And Kirk's invited as well. But we'll bring him back in. Come on. All right. We're going to take a break here on Raiders Live. Thanks for being with us. Check her out, NFL Media, all week long, all of our analysis. We'll see you soon. We'll take a break on Raiders Live. We'll be back in just a minute. This is such an iconic franchise with the storied history, and obviously it all starts with the legacy of Al Davis, so there was a connection and a fit, and I think that's really important in this league. There's a lot of people that we affect by wins and losses. We understand that, and we don't take it lightly. Hey, 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 like we talked about it, man. Blank sheet, new chapter, we write our own script. Yo, we believe. Think about what I said. I will, we will, I believe, we believe. God damn it, this is what the hell we do. Raider Nation. That bad boy good. That bad boy ready to rock. When you talk about the, the Raider way or the, the Raider tenants of commitment to excellence, just win baby, once a Raider, always a Raider. But when you walk in this building, I mean, you can feel it. We're talking about doing it for one another, playing for one another, playing the game the right way. Biggest window, front window. And guess what? Every door we go into, we're kicking that in from now on. With all the doubters, with all the stuff they've been talking about, no, man, it's okay. We don't want to be like, we want to be respected. We don't want to be like, we want to be respected. And we've earned our respect. First of all, suited and booted, you're looking good. Appreciate that. You're handling business. We've already gone through two surgeries on the off season. How are you feeling right now leading up to this night? Uh, feeling incredible. You know, uh, the first couple first couple weeks were tough. I couldn't move much. But um, last three weeks, I've been rehabbing, working out, doing my thing, improvising. But I got the best team in the world with the Raiders. Uh, and they're, they're working with me every day, so I'm feeling great. Let's talk about this for a second. Defensive Player of the Year. These are multiple nominations tonight here. Defensive Player of the Year, Walter Payton, NFL Man of the Year, and the R. Rooney Sportsmanship Award. I was talking to Miles Garrett earlier, asking about you and the relationship that you guys have. And also across the league, I feel like you really resonate with a lot of the players. You got that Kobe mentality. Shout out to that. They just unveiled his statue tonight as well in Los Angeles. What are, what are the emotions that you have knowing that young boy who started in football and where you're at right now? Um, honestly, it's, it's the biggest blessing in the world. Uh, everything that's transpired over the last five years um, is all happened for a reason. And um, I know it, I trust it, and it all starts with the work. Um, that's it. You know, everybody's got talent. Everyone's got dreams and aspirations, but it's about the footwork, about doing the action every single day. Um, I've been doing, you know, just for example, like this week is I've been busy, locked in. I got a million things I got to do, but the work comes first. I'm up, I'm up at 520 this morning. I got the Raiders strength coaches, my rehab guy at the crib, and I'm working out 630 in the morning getting to it for two hours. Like that's what it takes to be here. It's 365 meals, uh, recovery, literally everything. So um, that's why I'm here today. It's simply because I'm relentless at what I do and what I love. And um, this is only the beginning. The chip on my shoulder is only growing bigger. Um, I want to be the greatest to do it, and it's uh, as simple as that. Something that I've noticed, too, again, I, I'm from the Bay, and I will say this till the day I die. I've been a Raider fan since the beginning, you know, silver and black. You've been there in Oakland as well. When you see what AP's done, the, uh, the way that you guys all come together, and he's walking, I'm sure, shortly out here. I was with Sandra earlier. The way this team and this organization has come together to not let anything get in the way of what's happened, the bumps in the road. What is so special about Raider Nation? What is so special about the organization? And why do you feel like you fit here? I mean, it's the greatest fan base in the world. Um, simple and plain. No matter where you go, if you see a Raider fan, they're screaming Raiders through any building. No matter if you're in a church, they're screaming Raiders. Um, I mean, they showed me love since day one. Um, I got it tatted, you know, the shield tatted on me before I ever played a snap. Um, I, I feel like I was born to be a Raider. I love this organization. I love everybody involved, and we just want to win. That's all that matters. I want people around me that are aligned with greatness and want to get a fourth Super Bowl here, and I feel like AP is exactly 
he embodies everything that, that comes with being a Raider. So, you know, every time, you know, it's being a leader, sometimes you do things that, you know, other people might not agree with. And um, you might take some heat, but that's what being a leader is. I'm willing to stand in the fire uh, for people I believe in, and uh, I'll do it every single time, and I'll do it again. What's the biggest lesson that you have learned about yourself? Is there one stand out moment, trials and tribulations, everything you've been through, being a new dad, being married, being a father, you know, just the whole thing in life. But what have you learned about yourself in the last few years? Um, I've learned that there's no such thing as a as sky is the limit. Um, I always post more is required, 1%, and I live by that every single day. Um, the main thing I learned about myself is that there's no limits to what I can do. Um, I have the greatest support system, I have the best circle, I have my daughter, my wife, I have all my closest friends, my agent, everybody involved are like, it's closer than family, like we're, we're tied in for life, so they make it easier for me, um, and I'm obsessed with being great um, in everything I do and everything I venture in, whether it's a podcast or on the field, off the field, my foundation, whatever it is. If I love something and I'm passionate about it, I'm going to give everything I have into it. And it's only the beginning. I know there's, a, there's more I can do. And I would say, yeah, you know, the motto of my life is just more is required, always. Okay, good luck in there tonight. Should we do a small, quiet Raiders chant? Let's do it. Raiders. Welcome back to Raiders Live from Media Row at the Super Bowl. All the former Raiders are swinging through the set here. And one of my favorites, Akbar Bajabia Mia, stopped by. He's a former defensive end for the Raiders, but you can catch him on some very big network shows lately. He stopped by to talk about not only the Raiders' defensive line, but what he remembers about being close to Raider Nation, and also his opinion on Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift. Listen in. Joined now by former Raider, one of my good friends. You can catch him on Ninja Warrior. Yep. You can also catch him every day on The Talk on CBS. Akbar Bajabiamia, it's good to see you. Thank you so much, Amber. I, yeah. mean, I mean, you are a superstar. Uh, well, you know, thank you so much. It, it, it has been kind of a whirlwind, you know, with all the different beats that are happening, but uh, I am truly humbled, you know, to be, you know, you think about where these things started from. If it was never for the silver and black that gave me an opportunity to showcase my football skill, I don't have the platform to transition into broadcasting. So, uh, but it's been pretty fun. And how close do you stay to the Raiders organization? Oh. I know, I mean, I don't want to act like, you know, I don't want to put out how big time you yeah. are, but you did invite me a couple years ago. You're like, oh, you're going to the Raiders game. Yeah. Do you want to come on my plane? I was like, you have, we're going on a like, your <laughs> plane? I mean, you're big time, but I knew you well, were, you were, the Raiders well, yeah. were giving well, you some tickets and. Yeah, well, I was asking Mark, Mark, Mark Davis to pay for the plane, but he said, no, <laughs> he said, no, that never happened. Said, no. <laughs> that, that never happened. No, I, I had a lot going on that day, but yes, you were supposed to come. I was supposed to come. And Amber was so big time she goes like nah I'm I cool go I'm, I can't go jet. on your plane I'm good <laughs> <laughs> no man I, I appreciated you yeah. inviting me and it's so fun to be a part of Raider Nation just tell me some of your memories of being a Raider and interacting with that fan base which is one of the, the most amazing in all of football yeah, loyal fan base look, uh, look I'm, I'm just keeping it real you know, we've had some hard times as, you know, as the Raider organization, you know, when it comes to what it's expected with winning. But the fan base stays loyal. You know, so many teams, some people jump, you know, their bandwagon, right? They Not jump. these fans. The Raiders, they've been rocking. You think about, like, tough times since 2003. Right. I mean, it's been 20 years of tough times, you know, and not meeting the expectations. We had a couple of good years in, in there. The, I, I think about that eight and eight year when we were starting to rise. So about during the little bit of the Gruden era where there was a push moving forward. Um, but they, they are loyal. And that's the type of fan base you need, because I don't ever judge a fan base by good times. I judge them by the by tough time. Times. And yeah. so. It runs deep. That silver and black runs deep. It does for sure. And I know that they love you, Akbar, and everybody's proud of your success. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about the season that was for the Raiders. Are you excited? There's so much hope around yeah. Raider Nation right now. Are yeah. you excited about the new coach and Antonio Pierce? Yeah. I mean, you're a former player. Do you love the idea of a former player yeah. getting uh, an opportunity? I do. I love the idea of getting an opportunity. I feel like Antonio Pierce is the right pedigree. He ain't old. Sorry, AP. I, I did kind of call. <laughs> you old but he ain't that old <laughs> but he's not that young he really does fit right in the middle because he's relatable you know um, and again this is not a knock to AP but I think when I look at him and I think about the new 
the new age players. It used to be they value the experience. Oh, he's been in the league for 25 years coaching, and that's what players looked up to. Now the players seem to look and quantify respect to relatability. And you couldn't find a more competent and a more deserving and a more relatable coach than Coach Antonio Pierce. He's got a, a, a certain thing and an energy that he brings that the players connected to and we saw that right mm -hmm. um, obviously you know a great defensive player during his time and again it wasn't that long ago that he no. played and so I think players I covered him so so he covered him he understands that and he understands what it means to have a winning culture having a Super Bowl understanding that mm -hmm. uh, and I think the other thing too he has the ability to really help some of these defensive players that they have on there Max Crosby as great as he is can still pick up some things from Antonio Pierce. Mm -hmm. A divine Diablo, I think that kid it could be the future of the Raiders. And I think who better than Antonio Pierce to give him some of the nuances of the game and teach him that and allow him to continue to to, to grow into who he is. Uh, and then, you know, we look at, you know, Aiden O'Connell, you know, he, he was uh, the kind of the, the, the engine that could, you yeah. know what I mean? And like a lot of people didn't know, but I think there's some development there. I think some areas that we need to address as well, too. Yeah. Um, some help for Devontae Adams as well. We need to see some more standout in that situation. Running back situation to be solid with me, you know, um, with, with Josh Jacobs. If they so, bring him back, that's yeah, a decision. Yeah, 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 yeah that to, is a decision. I'm over there speaking like I'm a general manager. <laughs> you know, AP, if you want, you got, yeah. well, you got already have it. You already put him back on the roster. You already put it. If you need an assistant general manager, you know, I could. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt that you could do that. Uh, yeah, I, you know, knowing I, you, you know, know, nah, like, nah, I'm going to go be a GM. Yeah, let, 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 let me pump the brakes. I, <laughs> I would, though, if I were to go back into it, I would do D-line coaching. Really? I yeah. love, I love yeah, that. I had a, a D-line academy at one point. I coached D-line in high school, fell in love with teaching the guys and really getting into it. You know, it's crazy. You know, I didn't have a wildly successful football career, but it seems like the, some of the better coaches are the ones who still have a chip on their shoulder <laughs> that they didn't get. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I think of Phil Jackson, right? You know, like, dang. You're, you're going to be the Phil Jackson <laughs> yeah. of defensive line coaches? Yeah, right. What do you think of the Raiders' defensive line other than Max Crosby? I mean, Malcolm Kuntz, you know, number 51, he was a guy that just came along. Um, there are some free agents, but there's Bilal Nichols is going to be a yep. free agent. Uh, Adam Butler is going to be a free yep. agent. But the, I feel like the defensive line play yep. of the Raiders changed dramatically from early on until yep. those last it nine weeks. It was a mentality. Weeks. It was. That last mid, midway through the season, it was a mentality shift because you don't make it to the league, period. I don't care. You cross the league. You look across. It doesn't matter, you know, the 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 – the mentality is what matters the most, right? Because everybody has a certain level of equal talent base to play in the league, right? And so when you get a guy who can switch the flip or flip the switch like Antonio Pierce did for that line, I'm like, wow, they're more aggressive. They're yeah. playing loose. They're not thinking Same too personnel, much. Same personnel, different mentality. So, different mentality. Yeah. They were all starting to look like clones of Max Crosby. <laughs> I was like, dang, gum. Yeah. Like, okay, I see. Right. So um, I do think they need some more depth, though, in that position. They need another game changer, a difference maker up front. That makes a huge difference. The secondary, I think, too, needs yeah, a I'd lot agree. of help. So, and again, I feel like I'm in-house so I can be critical, but in a positive way. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is this is your former team. Yeah, we yeah. love hearing what once a Raider, always a yeah, Raider, yeah. right? Like hearing what you think. But I know on the national stage, uh, you've talked a lot about this Travis, Kelsey, Taylor Swift situation. Yes. Uh, why are you so – because you, you have daughters, I yes. know. I mean, yeah. are you invested in the Taylor Swift situation? Uh, okay, so here's how I got into this. <laughs> so I did not – I knew Taylor Swift, obviously, shake it off. That's all I knew. Uh -huh. And I knew the Kanye West thing. That's it. Okay. I wasn't into her music. But then she comes to L.A., to the, you know, to the arena, uh, uh, whatever, the yeah. SoFi Stadium. Crypto. Oh, yeah, the oh, SoFi she Stadium. Was SoFi. You're right. Yeah, she SoFi, was SoFi Stadium. And my daughter's going crazy. We got to see Taylor Swift. We got to see Taylor. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. I go. And I go. And I'm going, oh, my goodness. This is one of the best shows I've ever seen in my life. It was better than oh, the you Renaissance were dad tour. Jamming. You were dad oh, jamming. Oh, it was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It was amazing. I'm like, I get it. Okay. And then the Travis Kelsey thing breaks out. I'm like, I'm a fan. You're invested. I'm a Swifty. I don't yeah. care. You I want them to it. ride off into the sunset. I want them. I want Travis I'm a Kelsey. Swifty. Things I, I never thought. I want Travis Kelsey to get on that knee after they win the Super Bowl. <laughs> oh, you're predicting and, the Chiefs? Yeah, you're I'm predicting, predicting the Chiefs. Predict okay. And to propose to Taylor Swift. 
Why not? This is your Why moment. Not? Everybody's watching. You guys are the new power couple. No, you can't propose to Taylor Swift at the Super Bowl. I mean, no. Why? You can't be Why? like the guy Why? at the stadium that puts it, here, hold my hot dog, and you get a ring out. No. You can't do Why? that. Why can't you? <laughs> It is romantic. Look, oh, everybody gosh. knows and says that the wedding day is the woman's day, right? Yeah. What day is the man's it's day? Super the winning day, the Super Bowl. The day that he wins, he's he's not he's putting that aside, his his own accomplishment, and he's humbly getting on his knees in front of 200 million people, a hundred thousand people live in the stadium, getting on his knee and proposing, "Will you marry me?" You know the she world can't will say lose no. Its mind. You the know world, she can't say she can't. If you want. If you want her to say yes, put her on blast. <laughs> put her on blast. I don't feel like that's a good strategy, Akbar, but but we, we can talk about say, that would offline. You say no? Would you say no? Uh, I would say yes, but then I'd wink and be like, we're going to talk on the side. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to embarrass you in front of 200 million people, but we're going to talk on the side. Uh, oh, <laughs> that's what I would, but you know me, I grow, I'm going to keep it 100. She said, oh, we're going to talk on the side. We're going to talk about this. <laughs> about this, but yeah. I'm not going to embarrass you right now. Yeah. Uh, Akbar, so you're picking the Chiefs. Why? Um, look, first off, you know, it's not lost on me that this is a very special number. 58 for 58. Who could forget the late, great Derek Thomas, number 58? Loved watching him. How cool would that be? You know, I everybody thought about that. Yeah, That's awesome. yeah, it, it, yeah it's, a, it's a special, you know, as a defensive player, I grew up wanting to be like Derek Thomas. And so you think about the Kansas City Chiefs and all the success they've had and Patrick Mahomes. We've said all these things, but I'm like, you know, this is cool. I could see the city of Kansas City and the organization paying tribute to um, the late, great yeah. Derek Thomas. That's like great. This, this is a Super Bowl that he never got a chance to get. Wow. Yeah. That's that's wonderful. Yeah. I, I, okay, I like that sentiment. Yeah. All right, we're going to play a game with you. Okay. Grab that little marker right there. Yep. All right, this, these. Oh, some, somebody did. Who didn't erase these? Uh, here, here who didn't erase, erase I didn't, these? I didn't see anything. You didn't see anything. We got we to gotta get this taken care of. Okay. You didn't see anything. Okay. Here, take this board. Okay. So, uh, you can see the people that have played. Uh, you've got to answer these seven Super Bowls. Where did they take place? This one is Las Vegas, right here. So, we're yep. going to go down. Well, no, no, oh, we're going to okay. give you a minute. Okay. Just explain the game. Take a look at the leaderboard. You can see, like, Kemi checks. Got all seven correct in 14 okay. seconds. Wow. That's who you're, that's who you're chasing. Oh, I'm being timed? You're being timed. But even the great Rich Gannon only got four out of seven right, and it took him wow. 37 Rich seconds. Wow, I played with Rich, Rich Gannon. Rich Gannon, I know. Okay. He's a great uh, guy. Okay, let's let's get the clock oh, started. Oh, oh, hold on. So this is, this is Vegas. Okay, you know, yeah, yeah. Just to yeah, help yeah, you yeah. out. Okay, just okay. Help you out. All right. In three, two, one, go. Uh, uh, the, um, oh, boy. Uh, 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 a, uh, uh. Uh, 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 Ooh, he's uh, doing yeah, good. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Sha -ba 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 -ba. He's oh, doing good. Sha -ba 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 -ba. Does everybody get stripped up here? Because uh, we don't yeah, remember. We don't remember the COVID years. <laughs> Nobody remembers what happened. Oh my word! You're right. We don't remember the COVID years. Oh my word! Just put anything. You know. You know where the cities were. Just take a guess. A guess. Oh, I'm drawing a blank. There was a couple in Florida. There was a couple in Florida. Okay, I'm gonna go. Oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> was there? There was, was another there? one in Florida. Uh, uh, there was another uh, one in a really cold, cold, cold city. Oh, oh, that would have been right here. I was at that one. <sighs> oh man, your time is up. Okay, all right. I get, see, I was nice, but just because I've worked with Akbar for so long, I, I gave you some. How did I do? So you got the first three right. Okay. You actually got Miami right. This was Tampa. That was right Tampa. Here. That was Tampa. This was Atlanta. Nobody remembers Atlanta. Nobody has gotten Atlanta. I, yeah. Nobody. Wow. Except for Kimmy Checks, who's okay. perfect. Uh, Minnesota. Minnesota. You got all it right. So, so, all right. All right. So you got one, two, you got... Five right. five right. Got okay. five right. Hey, Akbar, continued yeah. success, man. Thank I you love so seeing much. your star hey, real, real quick, yes. I want to talk about Experian Boost. Uh, Experian Boost is really here to help people boost their credit score by giving them the opportunity to boost their credit score by paying for their utility bills, by their streaming services. They also have now a new Experian Smart smart money digital checking account that allows people to improve their credit score. So go to Experian.com or download the app. I'm going to check it out. Yeah. I'm going to go buy a couple things too, so All I'm right. going to get that credit score up. Thanks All a lot, Akbar. Right. Thank you so much. Thank Good you to so see much. you, my friend. Intercepted!
right down the sideline. We told the state of Nevada. Touchdown. That you're getting more than a football team. The highest point total in Raiders franchise history. You're getting an army. You got to stay involved no matter what it is. We have a commitment to this community. And working in the community is the thing that we do the best. One night. One cause. One nation. Be there as we put the helmets down and our hands out in support of Nevada. Introducing the inaugural Las Vegas Raiders Foundation Silver and Black Gala. Featuring players, coaches, alumni, and entertainment. Join us in providing help and hope to those struggling with mental health issues. Secure your spot today. What's it feel like here, NFL Honors, someone who's played in the league, someone who's done what you've already done, but continues to grow and learn as a man? What has that process been for you? It's beautiful. I mean, I, I, everything in my life has been a stepping stone. Yeah. I don't cheat the process. I've gone really the hardest route you can go to get to this, this point. Uh, it hasn't been pretty at times, but more importantly, I stay true to myself. And I think that's what I really believe in. I mean, I'm about my core values. I push that on others. I do everything with a smile. I'm happy. I love what I do. Uh, but to be here at the honors, be here with the greats, both in the past, the present, and got some future probably greats here. And then when you're a former player and you're around it, you, it's, it's that feeling that you miss being in the locker room. Like, that, that's yeah. why I came back to coaching. I want to be around the boys. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to hear it. I want to see it. I want to smell it. I love that part of the game. You remember that very first moment that you put on your jersey and hit that field? Oh, yeah. No, it was like no other. Like, it was like one of those moments you looked up and it was like you in a movie, right? You're looking up and it's like, it felt like the stadium was bigger than what it was. It felt like the players were bigger than what they were. And the game went so fast. But then once you get that first hit, you go back to your, your natural instincts and not just playing football, the game that you love, you've been doing your whole life. You make it look so easy and we know it's not. It's not to get to this point in your career. I don't know if you had ambitions to be at this point, because I feel like in our lives, we never know what's going to happen day in and day out. It changes. How do you feel now that this moment's happened? Have you actually sat by yourself at all to hold it in and say, wow, I did this. I did that. No, I haven't. <laughs> I've been rolling ever since. Since November 1st, really October 31st, this bad boy been rolling. And um, I really don't plan on stopping. I'm okay. I'm built for this. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of people that's, you know, can say they're ready for this opportunity. I'll be honest. I'm just built for this. And why you say that? Because I've been through so much of my life, adversity, and other situation. Like, this is part of the process. And do you ask me a question? Did I see this happening? I did. I didn't know when. I didn't come into the game to be a linebacker coach my whole life. I'm used to being a leader. I'm used to being on in front of the team talking. So I knew at some point it's just about an opportunity. And when Mr. Davis gave me the opportunity, I told him straightforward, you ain't getting it back. You ain't getting it back. We're putting that on a T-shirt, a mug, everything. <laughs> um, I talked to your wife. I know the family bond is so strong. Your boys always come to the game. They play basketball, not football, right? right. So oh, <laughs> how does that feel? It's good on the heart, but it hurts the soul, <laughs> right, if you know what that means. But, like, but it's cool that they're taking their own path, you yeah. know, and I really appreciate that about them. They're three little dudes, and they kind of roll, and they go at their own beat, and I love it. They got different personalities. One of them got AP swag. The other one got their mama swag. The other one, he just different. So <laughs> it, it, it's, just, it's cool to see. Before you get out of here, another thing I want to ask, again, um, Raider Nation loves you. I think you embody that. I, I was born and raised in the Bay, and I've never had this conversation with you. When I watch you and my family watches you, we sit at the games when I'm not covering them, we're on our hands and knees like, come on. It's like we're, we're in it. We've been in it since the beginning. My dad was there when it was at Laney College and like back in the day in Oakland. To have the memories that you have as a kid growing up watching that team, to have the heart that you have, what is it, if you can explain to the people at home that aren't a part of Raider Nation, what that core value is and what this team and this organization means and what this fan base means? Yeah, I'm going to start with the fans because that's what it started for me being a fan when they were in L.A. at the Coliseum watching that bad boy roll. But it was something about that silver and black. You know, something about it, seeing it walking down the street, seeing the color, seeing the hat, seeing the logo, seeing the shield, seeing the patch. It, it gave you a certain swag, certain confidence, a certain belief, like you, you might want to choose otherwise. And the more important part, of what I saw was a team that played together, a bond. As you heard, I'll just say it over and over, that commitment to excellence, like just win. Simple words, like you know, I always say, game the game of football is simple. It really is because when you love it, 
you live it, you breathe it, you embrace it, you do it with one another. And the more important, what I love is that the fans embrace it so much. Like, you feel that love. Like, I felt that love at the end of the game against the Denver Broncos like no other. I'm talking about in my whole career as a player or as a coach. That's real. That's real love. That's fan love. That's Raider Nation. I know you got to get in because everyone's looking for you, I'm sure. Max Crosby's someone that you you highlight a lot when you speak. He's got that 1% mentality. He's got that Kobe Mamba mentality as well. Um, quickly, if you can just describe that relationship that you two have. And then last but not least, what it just means to finally hold it down. There is nothing else but head coach. <laughs> no interim, no nothing to be able to have that title. Yeah. First with Max, I mean, I think it started with our competitive talks. When I first got here, me challenging him, you know, he would challenge himself, talking about how great he wanted to be. I kept challenging him each and every day, can he push a little bit more? And then that grew and grew, and then there was times, you know, me and him were butt heads, and in a positive way, and he knew what time it was, and I knew what time it was. So I always know I got to be ten toes down with him. Uh, but what it means for me to be the head coach, I'm ready to rock. I hope the Raider Nation ready to rock with me. So should we do it real quick? Let's hit him. One, two, three. Raiders! Yeah! It is draft season, and with that, it's our pleasure now to welcome you to the Raiders NFL Draft Podcast. This is a very exciting time. We get a chance to join the nation, Raider Nation, talk a little bit about the draft. The Raiders very well positioned in terms of draft resources, draft capital. This will be a fascinating uh, watch as we get closer to the draft and kind of see how the Raiders put the pieces of the puzzle together. We've got a lot to cover here over the next eight weeks and so excited to be here on this Raiders NFL Draft Podcast. to Raiders Live from the Super Bowl, still hanging out here with Kirk Morrison yeah. on Media Row. And there's so much excitement around the defense because right. of what happened at the end of last year. But the defensive line, and we've had a couple guests come through here and say, hey, I'd like to see a little bit, Rock Barr just said it, a right. little bit more depth at the defensive line position. And right. he's not wrong for that. Right. We've seen uh, when you're able to rotate defensive line in the way that you can wear out other offenses. We saw yeah. that a couple years ago with the 49ers team that went to the Super Bowl a couple years ago, how deep Correct. that defensive line was. So free agency. Yes. There are some big, uh, and I mean big names. Now, they're going to cost. Right. So I, I, the Raiders are about $40 million under the cap. Correct. That's about how much room they have. But Chris Jones is going to be out there. <laughs> I like that Justin yes. Matabike, okay, Absolutely. Right? We saw him at the Pro Bowl together. Any names stand out on the list here for you? Yeah, I would say also like Leonard Williams, because I think we're talking about interior rush. I thought Malcolm Coon shown a lot uh, on the outside. Max Crosby, he's your bookend. He's set. Um, you also drafted Tyree Wilson last year. So the development that he's going to take going from year one to year two. So you feel like you got a couple of experienced outside rushers already. I think in, inside you want to develop a little bit more depth there. That's where I see in free agency creating some more competition along the middle of a defense. I feel like not having a quarterback step up in your pocket, right? Not having Patrick Mahomes step up in your pocket, not having Justin Herbert step up in the pocket or in whoever the Denver Broncos put at quarterback. That's going to be huge for the Raiders. I think that's where they want to lean on. You want to create and flush the quarterback out of the pocket and allow Kuntz and Tyree Wilson and also obviously Max Crosby who should have been defensive player of the year. At least at least more people voting for him that was, defensive player yeah, of the year. That's a whole that. other story. I'm, I'm but, not okay with that one. But I, I, I we want to see more of that. that happens. I know. But I think it, it, it comes to wins and losses. Uh, yes. The Raiders obviously fall short of getting under I mean getting at 500. And so I really believe that next year once they get over 500, they'll get more of the recognition that I think a guy like Max Crosby deserves. And also, it's nice to know that Max could get those kind of honors because he does have more help. I think the emergence yes, yes. of Malcolm Kuntz made his life easier. And imagine mm -hmm. if Tyree Wilson uh, begins to emerge as well. We Correct. saw incremental improvements in his rookie season. But, you know, I've, I've spoken to a lot of veteran pass rushers mm -hmm. that are retired, that are, are still playing. <laughs> right. I remember Justin Tuck telling me I was a disaster my first year in the yes. NFL. I, it, it, everything happens fast, and not everybody comes out, especially pass rushers. Right. Uh, learn how to rush the, rush the passer in the NFL in their first year. But Tyree Wilson did better when they moved him on the inside. Correct. What do you think they'll do with him this year, Patrick Graham? I think that you build off what you saw from him when he was in certain positions, he was able to excel. And I think that's where you start with him. The game will slow down for 
a player in his second year. For Tyree Wilson, it'll be that way. He now understands how offenses want to block him. He now understands certain plays, downs and distance. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that I remember as a player that I started to develop. And by year two, it's like, ah, so that's what you're talking about. OK, now I get it. Oh, wait, third and nine. Oh, yeah, they're probably going to pass. And you start to look at pass sets and how offensive linemen are lined up. Those are the things that allow you to play much, much faster. And I think that's what's going to put him in a position to be a much better player in his second year than I think in his first year. Look, he was also hampered with injuries. And you're trying to figure out, okay, I want to go full speed. Am I at full speed? Am I at 100%? Once I thought that he was playing a little bit better at 100%, he took off this year. We saw some of the promise in which why he was drafted so high by the Raiders. Yeah, and uh, look, for you, what was the most shocking thing when you came to the NFL <laughs> as a defender, learning uh, other offenses? Like, what was the number one thing that you were like, wow, I was not ready for this? I just, the way that offenses have different looks that you think one thing and they do something totally different. Uh -huh. uh, also learning, yes. This level. <laughs> and then also the offensive linemen. They disguise the looks. Yeah, yeah. it's go from you're in college and the other team may have one or two NFL type guys and you in the NFL, they're all NFL type guys. Mm -hmm. So you, there's no getting around it. So you got to learn to do what's best for you. Sometimes you don't need to have, go and smack an offensive lineman and push him around. Maybe sometimes go around him. And I try to learn that quick, pretty quickly, and that's what helped me out. Yeah, and we're waiting for our, our guest, Laura Oakham, getting ready to come over to the set. She'll be calling the game for Westwood One Sports, yes. as you can hear on Sirius XM NFL Radio. She'll be calling uh, the Super Bowl. I think she's making her way over this way. But um, sure. staying with the defense, Jack Jones. Yes. Just one of the cool stories. Right. Correct. AP knew him and yes. and knew that he had some flaws, a lot right. of flaws, not just I some. wouldn't say a lot of flaws. I think mm -hmm. just much more needed guidance. OK, I think Antonio Pierce has known Jack Jones since I Come on over, he Laura. coached him over, Come on over. in college. There Sorry, I don't is. mean to cut you off, Kirk, no, but Laura is great. standing right here on set. we got to bring her out of a seat. Got welcome a seat to our you. set, Laura. Make the shot. There, there you welcome, go. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Perfect. Welcome. Hey. Laura, can't yes. wait to talk to you. You're going to be calling the Super Bowl for Westwood One. What is yes. What number is this for you? Uh, what time is it right now? I'm like, <laughs> where am I? is it right yes. now? Have My we name? called this? Has the Super Bowl happened? It's number five. Number and five. Yes. what's really cool is I thought that this dream was so far gone. And wow. was like, okay, well, that's just not going to happen in my career. Mm -hmm. But to be at this age over 50 and be like, I got to, I'm now on my fifth Super Bowl. Yes. It means so much more to understand how hard it was to get down there, to understand the privilege of it all. And also just to be at the age to know how pretty, how awesome it was and how much work it took to get here. You know, I always love the the picture that you paint because you're down on the field and you have a perspective that us as fans who will be watching the game, we don't get a chance to see. And so in the four previous Super Bowls that you've worked, what's been the coolest thing that you do get a chance to see down that field? I'm going to sound like a player when Please, I say this. I love it. But the pregame is so wow. amazing. And you understand why the guys who say it makes a difference if you've been here before because the spectacle of it all. And I still get caught up in it. And I want to get caught up in it, right? Like, I want to keep being like you're at the Super Bowl. And I... I don't want to just look back at Super Bowls and be like, that was this score, or this game. I want to look back and be like, this was my moment. This right. was the anthem that I loved. And I see players doing that. So I think what I love so much being down there is pregame, we all walk around doing it. Yeah. Right. And so if it's a player, if it's a coach, if it's another broadcaster, just kind of that like, Way to go. Yeah, Look at where here. we are. <laughs> and then, as cliche as it sounds, I also love the switch of it all. I love when, mm. the, after the coin toss, I love that it feels like a game again. And I know, in a silly way, I need that. Like, I know that calms me down, so I can't even imagine what it feels like on the sideline. But that's a cool moment when you feel everybody, like, all that adrenaline and all that excitement, and then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, here, we're finally at a game. We're going to settle in. Yeah, everybody's up here, and then all of a sudden, yeah. like, oh, okay, okay, we've done this before, yeah, but yes. even for the broadcasters, oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, even yes. for the broadcasters, it feels like that. Um, Laura, I'm, you know I'm such a big fan of yours, and I love that you point out that you thought that the dream of covering a Super Bowl or calling a Super Bowl was gone, and I'm going to be frank about it. You probably felt like that because you're a woman and you're over 50 in this business, and we face a certain, a different kind of challenge in that sense 
that the opportunities go away as you get older. And there's women like you that are battling that. And you started uh, Galvanize, which is here at the Super Bowl, right here, Media Row. You'll see the Galvanize set. Yeah. And it is to recruit and train women in sports and sports casting. And I've been interviewed by a couple of your Galvanize reporters. Mm -hmm. But just tell me a little bit about that because it means so much to me because I didn't have that, and yeah. you didn't have that, and we had to fight through, we had to fight upstream. We were yeah. swimming upstream. Yeah. Yeah. Still and, you're, and you're trying to make it a little easier and create a path, and I just really commend you for that. Thank you. Because there's some women that get over this business and they can get bitter, and they can say, oh, opportunities are going to, to younger people, and you said, no, I'm gonna help younger people. And that says a lot about your character. Thank you, and you know, mutual, mutual Thank respect, you. mutual fan society here, uh, all three of us. Oh, Sorry to leave you out for a yeah. moment. No, no, no. Yeah. Right, but he's good. a feminist too. Yeah. You, you, have a, you have a choice to make, yeah. right? And so I know that, like you, I, I didn't have anything like this. And my first Super Bowl was 1992, and I came in with no confidence, and I left with less, if possible. Oh, wow. I was in so over my head, and I was just completely, like, just over my head, and just was being told you don't belong, so you didn't feel like you belong. And so it, to be able to full circle all these times, and now bring all these. The good thing is, at one point in my career, I started seeing more and more women, right? Like, first in 1992, there weren't any of us. And then it was like, okay, there's a handful. And then there's right. two handful. And now we could never count. There's so many women. Correct. But what I would also say is it's so many women just getting thrown in. And I just kept feeling like that little girl in 1992. Yeah. And I saw them. I'm sure you did, too. Yay, there's more numbers. But... They're not set up for success. No, and their yeah. confidence is being yeah. shot, not just on a Sunday, but on every day. And so it was just, you know, me going, how can I help? And I'm really thankful, Amber, that it wasn't when I was 30 when I saw it, or 40, I, I was 40, or like 35, because I think at that point I would have been more judgmental of the women and been like, well, then they can't cut it. Yeah. You know, because that's how we were raised in this yeah. business. But I was at a more motherly protective age and was like, well, that's not right. How can I help? I can't change the system, but what can I help change? And... It started with 20 women in a conference room for two days with me like, I don't know, how can I help? And it's over 5,000 women now, and wow. we are all over sports. It started in the media, but now we're, I mean, we're PR, we're marketing, we're agents, we're um, human resources, we're coaches, we're everything. How about GMs and presidents? And, and, yes. uh, and also, because that's where we're lacking, and what does it mean for the Raiders to have always been a leader? Always. From Amy Trask yes. to Sandra Douglas Morgan now, always. always been a leader in putting women in the front office positions. And also, we, we sat down and galvanized with Amy, the the other day and our one of our reporters drew jones asked her when's the first time you stopped being you've been you know a first this you know right. the, uh, the first woman ceo the first woman this when did you just become a ceo yeah. and amy was right away like i always was that's how i looked at myself and i was so in awe because i was like my Lord, that took me to 40, you know, of not being a woman broadcaster, but being a broadcaster. And so what I love about what Al Davis did and what Mark continues to do in this organization is it's not just the first woman to do this. It's that's the best person yeah. for that the best role. And here's the, the title. Yeah. And Sandra is. You, 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 know, you, you get to know her. Yeah, yeah. You've, you've had a chance to have relationships with general managers and coaches that they trust you with the information that they provide to you. And you've seen them grow throughout the business. Yeah. Uh, the Raiders have two new ones totally. in terms of their interim head coach, now head coach and Antonio Pierce. Tom Telesco is now their new general manager. He comes over from the Chargers. In your workings in the NFL, what, what are the Raiders getting with this marriage between these two? Um, we had my NFL on Fox crew is Kevin Kugler, Mark Sanchez, and we had you guys uh, for Antonio's first game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we were there, I think, a couple weeks before. So we had kind of seen the shift and, you know, what was happening. And all I know is everyone would say, what did you think? How did you feel? And right. I was like, I don't know how to define different. Mm. I don't know how to define energy. I don't know how to define, <laughs> like, it was just yeah. everything felt different. Felt from like a different season. A yes. different season yep. and a different joy yep. and a different, like, just exhale. And what I loved was that was the, <laughs> we were sitting in the production meeting on Friday and Antonio was saying, like, I'm not afraid to try things. Right. Like, I'm going to try things. Like, at halftime, I'm just going to reset, and I'm just going to start again. And, and he kind of kept going, and I was like, 
come on back here. Like, what do you, what does that mean? Hey. Like, what do you mean? Like, what are you doing to start all over? And he's like, we're going to stretch again on the field. You know, and when we come uh, out, yeah. I'm going to give the, you know, I'm going to give another halftime speech. And we were like, is he messing with it? Like, should we bring this <laughs> up? Right. Or like, but they he came really out early that. and guys were stretching and got, and they did this reset. And of all the years I've been doing this, it's the first time anyone has done anything different coming out of a locker room at 100%. halftime. Yeah, and, yeah. and that's when I was like, oh, this is fun. And so what I love about Antonio is he certainly isn't new to the league. He's new to the position. But what I love is that he's also, he's old enough that he's done it, you know, that right. he's been here before. But he's young enough to go, let's shake this up. And if that isn't the Raider way, I don't know Absolutely. what it is. Absolutely. Yeah. Love that. I love that. Um, tell us what it's like to cover the game. Because once you're down on the field, you and I have done a lot of side lines yeah. and it you're running around you're all <laughs> over the place yeah. um but how is the super bowl different i mean you're with you said kevin uh, kevin harlan will be calling this game and yeah. is it kurt warner kurt warner also, and, and then mike, mike golick, golick and i will also yeah. be there so you yeah. can check that out on sirius xm nfl radio all westwood one stations you guys will be broadcast um what is your job like down on the field does it change at all no nothing it's exactly changes. the same i mean it really is it's Nothing changes. Again, that's what I love about the, like, here's the game. Like, not, everything is the same. Yeah. And even Mike Golick is an extension of the booth. He's the third analyst, so I'm, you know, both sidelines. So nothing changes except when the clock hits zero and then I just get to go and Thank grab God. everybody and yeah. get the head coach and get the MVP. And that's my favorite part of the Super Bowl is getting those. I see, I have to disagree with you, no! Laura. I have to disagree with you. Tell me. Because I'm biased. And the reason why I'm biased is because when you watch the Super Bowl, it's the network Super Bowl. Yeah. So that means that the pictures are kind of shown. So you see them. I'm biased to the radio call and yeah, listening totally. to you guys because you have to paint the picture for me. I love that. So I love when the Super Bowl is happening. I've had a chance to cover them now. This is my ninth Super Bowl. This is your and ninth I, Super Bowl? Yes, covering it, you know, love doing it. interviews with the players. Yeah. But I put that transistor radio on, and I listen to you guys because you're painting a picture of what you see, of what's in front of you, which if you're not watching the game, yeah. you're listening to the game, and you get more in-depth. So I'm biased more to the radio, radio than I am the TV because it's you're more watching it. I want to hear it hear and it. see it. Um, radio is so much fun, and it's like I get the best of both worlds. Like, right. I'm chocolate and peanut butter. Like, it's, you know, during the season on right. TV, yeah. and there's some cool yeah. things about that. The access is different, yeah. and yes. the production meetings, and I wouldn't want to give that up. But there's nothing better than being eyes and ears yes, and really describing everything oh, you see. Right. I will still say one of the reports that I'm like, what was going on with me? was giving about a, probably a 35 second detailed picture of Ben Roethlisberger's broken nose and what the color and consistency of the blood was. But you get to do that and but so why right. wouldn't you, you do feel that? Like, that. Like, this is why you went to journalism school. You <laughs> don't feel like what do you see? This is, Describe yeah. what you see. This is exactly 100%. what I was trained for. Yes. And, and you do feel like a true like sports journalist when you leave there <laughs> because of how much you have to bring it to life exactly what you see and going back to the whole like full circling this with you know like with the sexism right where it's like the sideline role at some point became the woman's role it wasn't right, right? like I, I mean we grew up I grew up seeing men on the sideline but somewhere right. along the way it became the woman's role and radio helped me in a different way where they did not care what I looked like. Mm -hmm. They did not care anything. It was, do you know what you're seeing? Yes. And how can you make Judge us better? Judge me on better? what I say. Yeah. Judge so me on what I say. That. So yep. radio is a storyteller, as yes. a journalist, and just, again, who doesn't want to describe 30 <laughs> seconds of a broken nose and the blood <laughs> consistency? What is? Yes. All right, give us your pick. Please. Super Bowl no, 58. No, no. You can't do anything. It's just analysis. Who yeah. do you think could win and why? So I'm going to not do the pick at the end. What I'm going to do is my pick at the beginning. And this is just the one thing that I was on the Niners sideline the last two playoff yes. games. And mm -hmm. I have had them about seven times this year. And I don't know who that team was who came out. Correct. And so being on that sideline and watching them have the same reaction I was, which right. is, who is this? Like, what are we doing? Um, mm -hmm. I just know that I'm going to go instead of the ending, I'm going to start at the beginning and go. If that team does, if that team shows up again, Correct. how in the world are they going to come down from 17 to beat the Kansas City Chiefs, who are clicking at the right time? But also, I like the Niners have been grittier than we've seen them at the yeah. right time. Yeah. So can it's I who can shows I keep up? It that? <laughs> yeah. Can I keep they, it? At, it it's crazy. They haven't played their best game yet in the playoffs. Agree. Yeah. The Chiefs have played their best have game. Played their best game. We so know what again. that looks like. 
I don't know what the 49ers' best game, and if they have that on Sunday, it's like. That's why it's so well, hypothetical. It's so like hypothetical. it's all yes. like if this, if they ha if they come out and they are their best of what we see, then this I don't is going to be a great game. Yeah. This is one of the hardest ones to pick in a long time, it as is. far as I can remember, because we've seen kind of two faces of both teams, and you don't know yeah. which one's going to show up at times. Will the 49ers right. that lost to the Ravens show up, you know, or were the Chiefs that we saw earlier in the season that struggled at times and dropped football show up? It depends on who shows up. But, Laura, you do so much amazing work. We I cannot wait this, to Laura. hear uh, your call on Westwood One. And congratulations on your fifth Super Bowl. Thank you. And your ninth. What's your number? Congratulations. Oh, gosh, I think it was 12 or 13 yeah. for me. Look at us. Yeah, yes, look at us. Here we are. We're good. We We've are. done good, kids. We've and done you know good. Thanks for stopping <laughs> Thanks by. Thanks for having me. We appreciate it. Thank you. We'll be right back on Raiders Live. Much more to come from Media Row. We told the state of Nevada Touchdown! that you're getting more than a football team. The highest point total in Raiders franchise history. You're getting an army. You got to stay involved no matter what it is. We have a commitment to this community. And working in the community is the thing that we do the best. One night, one cause, one nation. Be there as we put the helmets down and our hands out in support of Nevada. Introducing the inaugural Las Vegas Raiders Foundation Silver and Black Gala. Featuring players, coaches, alumni, and entertainment. Join us in providing help and hope to those struggling with mental health issues. Secure your spot today. Hey Raider Nation, my name is Jordy. I'm originally from Topeka, Kansas, and this is my rookie season with the Raiderettes. I wanted to be a Raiderette because I've always aspired to be on this team. Not only are these women amazing dancers, but they're amazing people, and they have such a positive impact on the community on and off the field, and I'm so grateful to be a part of that this year. To put on the silver and black is a huge honor. Um, like I've said, this team is full of not only amazing dancers, but amazing people who inspire the younger generations and those around us and each other throughout the season. So I'm so grateful to be a part of this sisterhood. Um, the audition process was was intense, but also really fun. I got to meet so many amazing dancers from all over the country who, you know, have we all have the same goal and we're all there for the same purpose. But what really was amazing to me was how supportive everyone was of each other. Um, the girls, the vets, the new girls auditioning, the coaches, everyone was just really excited to be there and happy to audition. This season, I am looking forward to the first stepping out on the field and feeling the energy from the crowd. I have been to a couple Raiders games, but I'm sure it'll be even more exciting being on the field with my sisters. See you on the field, Raider Nation. Just win, baby. It is draft season, and with that, it's our pleasure now to welcome you to the Raiders NFL Draft Podcast. This is a very exciting time. We get a chance to join the nation, Raider Nation, talk a little bit about the draft. The Raiders very well positioned in terms of draft resources, draft capital. This will be a fascinating uh, watch as we get closer to the draft and kind of see how the Raiders put the pieces of the puzzle together. We've got a lot to cover here over the next eight weeks and so excited to be here on this Raiders NFL Draft Podcast. Raider Nation, stand up. Welcome back to Media Row here at Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas. Raiders Live rolling on. And yeah. you know what? It, it's it's Friday afternoon. It's Friday. All the shows are wrapping up. We're starting Absolutely. to see sets starting to come down, and that means that we're getting closer to the Super Bowl. You so it, it is exciting. But you have covered, as you said, nine Super Bowls. Yes, Oakman nine of them. just told us that. Correct. And we're going to have you play our game that everybody has been playing. First, can we take a look at the leaderboard yes. to see who your competition board. is? Right now, Kimmy Checks is in first place. She got it all 14 right. 14 points. 14.7 really? seconds. I still don't even think that's possible. Uh, yeah. um, 
yeah, not possible. I think Michelle Beadle's not even on there. She was so bad. I think she was our worst one. Okay. She's self admittedly. Um, so that's who you're up against. So you got one minute. I got one minute. Okay, I'm put the microphone down. But and I you feel tell like I feel like you have an advantage because you know what the game is and yes. you've had time to think. <laughs> whereas our other guests. No, no, no. I just know the game. I, know, I, I just go off the past winners. Okay. All right. right. Let's so you know where the it. winners and where it happened at. So I'm going to put the microphone down. You don't have to I put the winner. You just have to put where it happened. All you I have to put I is know. the city. But the winner coincides with me with the city. So I, yes. I, that's how I got to do it. Oh, this. you got to go in your head. I got to go won. in my head. Who won? Wow, that's where? an interesting take. Okay. okay. All right. I'm I just putting the microphone what down. What dinner did I like the best and what oh, city was see. it in? Here we go. Okay. All right. Here you we ready? Go. Hold on. Hold on. Ready? Okay. Let me know when Three. To go. Uh, okay. 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 Three, two, one, go. Okay, he's, he's, well, see, I think this is a little unfair. I do, because he did have an opportunity to understand the game and think about it, where the other guests, we just sprung it on him. You go, oh, the, yeah, oh, oh. I missed it. Oh man, he's got one. He's got he's got all of them in place except for one blank spot. Man, you're looking pretty good so far. Okay, done. Oh man, you almost. I had it. Do you I know where it. you when you wrote the first one in? Yeah. It was 17 seconds. You almost had Kimmy checks yeah. beat. That would have been. But but you messed it up. But let's just turn right, it around. All right, turn, turn it around. around. Let's see. Hold it to this camera right here. I didn't even get right this. over there. Wait, I don't know if okay. it was 33 seconds. It was less there than that. There you go. You have them all right. I have them all right. You have them all right. Man, you but, know, Atlanta and Minnesota has been throwing everything. But you know where I lost it at? Where? It was the one I didn't attend. Which one? The one that I didn't attend. That's why it was so hard and so difficult. So I got them all in a row. You did COVID year. The COVID year. I did yep. not do the COVID year. Do you know year what's funny? I, was I wasn't temp, at that's that why one I was like either. TB. But that was but Kirk, the one. But Kirk, you're in third. Didn't. You finished the week. You were uh, yeah, in third place. Okay. I, I should have took... Mike Garofolo. Oh By the God. way, there's no way Kimmy did that in 14 in seconds. In 14 seconds, come on. Can we confirm from our producers wow. back in the studio? Like, I don't, that is yeah. almost impossible now that I've seen this now game. I can't go, happens, now, I can't go backwards even though. So if this was 52, 51? 51 was Houston. Was Houston. 50 so was San Francisco. And 50 was San Francisco. 49. 49? I'll keep going. Okay. 49 was you ready? Uh, Phoenix. Uh-huh. Uh, 48 was uh, New York. New York, yeah. Uh, 47 was New, New Orleans. Orleans. <laughs> 46 was Miami. Da Miami. 45 was Dallas. Yes. <laughs> I can't go past that. that was, we're down to 2010. Yeah. 44 uh, was uh, Indianapolis. I think you're right. I think it was. What, did it go Indy, Dallas, go, or Dallas, Indy? That's where, been, I'm yeah, that's where I'm a little confused. That's where we confused it. Yeah, I think maybe. You're going way back, man. Indy then Dallas. Yeah, I think yeah. they were flipped. Indy then Dallas. Man, we're yeah. pretty good. We've covered a lot. Yes, uh, she's the winner. She Kimmy is. Uh, congratulations to Kimmy Checks of NFL Media. She is Correct. the Super Game winner here on. Uh, what did you? What uh, somebody? Stephen, our producer's trying to tell me what Kimmy Checks did. Okay, here's Kimmy Checks. Here's a look. All right, back. let me take a look. Here's I a look, take a look at, at this. Into Go. All right, let's oh, see. Oh boy, how we doing, Jesse? You got better one eyes for one than I right there. Here. I believe two for two, three for three, four for four. We got another winner there. Oh boy, this yeah, is gonna be top one's the easy one. All right, let's time. see. There you time. go. Look 14. At that. Oh done, man. Done, 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 oh done. man. But yeah, done, where's, done, where's the timer? Oh, timer's still running. Oh, they stopped it at 14. We, we, stopped yeah, it at 14. Yeah, 14. Okay. Yeah. Timer went a little bit. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, wait, we, have wait. A, we have a rules violation here. I, I believe it was 16. I may have been. I'm still mad that Tampa messed me up. I at least could I have know. been in second. You were at second. I at meddled. 17. How about that? You were, I meddled. You did meddle. I did it was, meddle. It was a very good job. I meddled. All right. Um, well, it has been fun it's hanging been out with you. That is for Absolutely, sure. Absolutely, always. And uh, your final pick for your before we... Before we go, your yeah, final pick. My final pick. Um, we know my dad is a lifelong Raider fan. Mm-hmm. I am a lifelong Raider fan as well. Drafted I just happen to be drafted by the Raiders, so I am a former Raider as it's well. It's a day for your dad, by the way. Correct, but we've uh, talked about this. So we had a family intervention. Which hurts most? What team would you rather win? That's a debate. That's a debate. And so I'll leave it at this. We would rather, as a family, 
The Morrison family. The Morrison family. We would rather the San Francisco 49ers win than the Kansas City Chiefs. I agree. In Las Vegas. I agree. Because we want them to lose so that every time that they come back to Las Vegas, guess what? They remember. They remember the pain. The division opponent. They're, You've got to. Every year they remember pain. when they came to Vegas, and they got their butts kicked in the Super Bowl. So. Oh, well, it's just been fun hanging Go out Niners. with you. <laughs> That's the only time you ever hear me say that. That's the only time you ever hear me say that. I'm with you. I'm, I'm yes. rooting for the Niners because I Correct. want them to beat the Chiefs. Right. But I think the Chiefs are going to win. Okay. From a football analysis standpoint, I think the Chiefs <laughs> will be the winner, but I, I'm hoping that it is the 49ers. Because I do like, we, we've done some training camps together. Yeah, Every they training have. Camp, they've come out last everybody, year. Yeah, and there's some sure. good dudes on both teams. But all right, Kirk, it has been so much fun. Thanks for hanging out with you me here on uh, Raiders Live. Absolutely. Hopefully I'll see you at the draft and yeah. everywhere else, and then we'll see you kickoff. Well, get ready. The last game of 2023, here a couple go. days away. All right, it has been such a fun week for us here on Raiders Live at Media Row, and we're going to leave you with a look back on some of the best of Raiders Live. Welcome in, everybody, to Raiders Live here in fabulous Las Vegas. The greatest quarterbacks <laughs> in Raider history. 45! Look at this. Blue 85, so hot, hot. Sounded like you were an arrowhead. You know, you, you kind of get the juices Raiders. flowing. You get out here yeah. to Vegas, you know what I mean? You, we got the stadium, the facility. I'm not crazy about the teams that are here, but sure. you know. Yeah. About Antonio surrounding himself with folks who have a lot of experience, right? AP is certainly the first His time. His chairs are luxurious. I'm going to take are advantage very now. Nice. I got to give the credit to our chairs. production guys. Yeah. They, we taught him a meticulous process yeah. to get these chairs. Yeah. Very meticulous. In terms of the city, though, like who puts on the big event better than Vegas, right? That's why so many conventions come here, so many big concerts and things like It's been the history of the city. I'm sure this will be part of the rotation, so to speak, when it comes back to having another Super Bowl. Every owner cares about their fans, okay? He might care the most. He is a fan. He literally is the voice of the fans. This is legacy changing for him, putting a Super Bowl in Vegas, putting a stadium in Vegas. It's still our town. I know it's Super Bowl week. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of black still going on around yeah. here. You know, silver and black still is the most dominant color. Now, what we got to do, and what I got to do, and what our staff and players got to do, we got to put a winning product on that field each and every day. And that's my only goal. That's my only goal. And we're going to strive to do that the best we can as long as I'm sitting here at the helm. Jack Jones looked like he played like a Raider. That guy plays the game fast and loose. You know, he takes chances. And, you know, he's got tremendous skill. I mean, his ability to put the foot in the ground and break on a ball is elite. I had no idea what Raider Nation was until I got to be a Raider. And boy. It's the best fan base oh, in the it, world. It, it, it ain't even close. Yeah. Dallas is delusional, but Raiders are real. <laughs> we thought that we needed to put a petition together. We were very worried, we being myself, Cody Decker, and, and anyone who's sort of paying attention, that they weren't going to do the right thing, and the right thing was Antonio Pierce. We live in this weird time where we're trying to figure out what makes the best head coach. You know, you got either a 72-year-old over here, or you've got all these young, like, nerds with their clipboards and the math, or you got a former player who these guys seem to absolutely gravitate towards and love, and the cigar parties, and the sweet cars that he rides up and I'm like come on man this is a no-brainer 48% not good I got a charge I got a charge oh you're already panicking ABC. Hey, what's the you're scoop of the day Ian Rappaport any Raiders news well the culture AP is building over there is is it's going to be different they're going to kind of be you know the Raiders of the Howie Long Raiders of, of you know this team that Man, you don't want to see them on your schedule. Everything that you do is being judged. So I thought Antonio handled it great, just like he handled every football situation when he played. I told him when I saw him yesterday, hey, bro, um, if you're going to be uh, even half the head coach that you were as a player, you're going to the Hall of Fame as a head coach, I'm telling you. Winning on and off the field, winning the building. Who's going to put in that work? You're looking for the guy that's probably, what, number four or five in line from Mr. Davis to Sander to Tom to AP and that quarterback. I mean, he's sitting here. He's He's got a seat on the plane on that private jet now. They would love to go and get one in the draft. Mark Davis would love to go get one in the draft. There's an obvious connection between uh, Jaden Daniels and Antonio Pierce going back to Arizona State. Will they actually be able to pull that off? Like you said, it's going to take a lot, but never say never. They're so quick to give you the, the Google answer and the Wikipedia answer. I'm like, son, Google is where you ask questions. Warren is where you get answers. And you have the logos of past seven Super Bowls. Yep. Can you, from memory, put down where the location of each of those Super Bowls were? Oh, man, this is not great for me. I know we got Scottsdale or Arizona, whatever, whatever right, you want to call it. We got two. We got yeah, two. Yeah. Done already. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Tom Pelzer goes to all these things. He does. Yes, you know. he does. 
does. I'm, I'm, he does. does. I'm blanking. Um, okay. Gosh, where was I? Where was I? Where was I? Uh, give me the answers. Shit, right? what was before Miami? Las Vegas. Last year we were in Phoenix, right? Mm-hmm. Phoenix. I may be, I may be stumped now. Oh. All right, one for one. Great start. <laughs> Strong start. Two for two. We're only 20 seconds in. Tom's crushing it. Ah! Not me forgetting everything before the pandemic. Well, it's, um, it's, it, are you still here? I've been. Oh man, I, I think I know, but I can't say it. Obviously. Don't say it. Don't yeah, say yeah, it. Don't yeah. say it. Four for four. We got another winner there. Oh boy, this yeah, is gonna be top one's the easy one. All right, let's Tom, see. There you Tom, go. Oh, we, we have a new right leader. Let's we go. We have a new leader.